You shit ass. <laughs> go. <laughs> Why you gotta take it there? Three take. This is a good one. We're not talking about any integrity. We are room. trying to exploit a generation. Let me tell you about that time when I paid for Chinese food with the DVD. The grease is the gravy. You just played footsie over the table. No. Yes, but that's <laughs> irrelevant. I can smell Pepto Bismol from here. It tastes like an antacid tablet. Why are there so many Draculas everywhere? <laughs> no. No. There's potato vodka. Welcome to Born in the 80s, episode 58. I'm your host, John Rowe, joined by my singular co-host... Lance Gilcoy. And returning special guest... Eric Rowe. Yes, he showed up again because Adam is in the great state of Illinois. <laughs> you doing... didn't ask for him, but you got him. No, actually, I, I, <laughs> I asked for him this time because I locked myself you out of my apartment. somebody to hang out with. We can talk about this <laughs> before <laughs> I got here. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so I uh, you went, did lock yourself. Out. I did. I went home to get um, uh, like uh, my my dad's truck, so I could move my. It's bay. funny how proactive John gets while moving. I know. He gets really pumped up. I He's am, like I just like hate weeks it ahead so of time. Much. He spent at least a, a week over want... here talking to, like talk about like I'm yeah. gonna move these boxes in. We're gonna put the boxes in. Yeah. <laughs> We're like yeah. And then it's like a week passes. Yeah. Well, you know. some more boxes coming. <laughs> we got those. We got like at least fifteen boxes in here. <laughs> hey, you know, I want to just get, get it all done, truck. so I don't get <laughs> fucked in the ass when we actually have to move. Just get pumped up is what he's doing. So I go it's, down. <laughs> it's going to take like a day <laughs> to get the truck. And yeah, I don't want to do it all in one day though. That yeah, it sucks. It that's ruins true. The day. Everybody's done that. And they don't want to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we got my dad's truck, and my dad was like. You should leave the keys with your car so I can give it a joyride. Ha, ha, ha. So <laughs> I decided to, like, leave the keys down there. Right. And little do I remember that my apartment keys are on that keychain. So yeah. I drive up in this giant fucking truck. It is enormous. It's an extended cab, like, big truck. Like an avalanche or Dodge something? Dodge Ram. It's fucking huge. Sweet. Uh, I know, it's sweet. Stepdad's got one of those. You drive one of those things, and they're so high off the ground when you're going like 70, it feels like you're going 20. It's ridiculous. I was like, is the speedometer broken on this? Like, I Nothing feel like I'm going... Nothing sound. Like no, it's quiet. Or it's just you know. like, you're just like, I'm just whooshing along the ground, and I'm actually going like 75, and it you feels like You just got like the, uh, the uh, like plastic wood interior that's sweet looking. Sadly, no. It's it's not. It's a oh. 2002, oh. so it's, it's rather new. new. It's not. <laughs> not super new, There's but even a little new. of that on the, the stick, I remember. So that was... Hey, oh, yeah. You get a little of the wood panel action. You gotta get rid of that. Put Classes the, put it the up. Put the eight ball on that bitch. Instant class. <laughs> Skull. <laughs> Only way to go. Skull. Like that guy from Armageddon. Exactly. Yeah. That's <laughs> where you gotta go, man. <laughs> That's gotta get immediately the what I think of. <laughs> How much time they spent putting the red lights in the eyes on that thing? You know, it's amazing. Four days. Is the skull that has the like... The fucking asteroid is going to kill us. You have to go now. Dude, you gotta not... get the skull on here or it's gonna suck. And what, why are these puppies in here? And what happens as soon as he uses Call that back. throttle? He like blows up or something. Yeah, you know. He's like, yeah, the skull throttle. And then he fucking like breaks the drill and his rig explodes and then they have to have Affleck and yeah. Willis is other rig do it i don't and remember then, anything then, about armageddon well basically all you need to remember is Bully that for you Bruce <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's actually probably better that you don't remember most of it all you Come need on. Have... aerosmith don't want to miss a thing Liv tyler animal crackers on the belly it's all there yeah nothing <laughs> all of it nothing. is there <laughs> um, yeah. yeah i think that the best part though is when bruce willis blows himself up at the very end you know they don't even show that. Though. I know, right? Just cry, fade well, out to Oh Aerosmith. boy, we got two cracks going on here. Uh, so before we came to the podcast, Eric and I were like, "Let's get some alcohol," and so we got forties. There's uh, the two open. I still am finishing my first beer here, um, and so I got Lance's Bud Light because I know Lance is a Bud Light fan, yeah. and I was like, "I like my Miller High Life, the Champagne." I beers. like High Life too. I do too, but I figured. You know, we change it up. So there was a choice. If you didn't want the Bud Light, you could get a High Life. I did go for it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then we look at the High Life label, and they're, they're 32 ounces. It's 8 ounces short. False that's, advertising. It's an 8 yep. ounce short. It is, it is exactly, what, 32 ounces? So that's one quart of beer. Although a 40 is a quart and 8 ounces. We got fucked. We did. It was they were under the 40 ounce label. It was. It was like 40 ounces, 490 or 
two ninety nine or whatever, and we got fucked. So it sucks, but it's the way it is. If we really want to go street, we gotta get the uh, forty ounces of uh, OE Old English. Oh God, that's what they, they drink in Compton. That. They lit. Well, they, <laughs> I'll tell you this right now: they were sold out of that stuff. So really, we had to go a little Some classier. Crime will be committed at the end of this night. Oh, you know it. God, will. I used With to those get... four empty forties of OE in the apartment <laughs> where they had left. God, I used to drink uh You four- empty out the OE, there will be crime committed. That's I used to nice. drink uh 40s of uh hurricane high gravity. Oh, just my like twelve percent alcohol, and then the next day you just be you just wake up dead. Yeah. It was the worst. I was drinking like a forty of wine. Because wine is like twelve. I saw it was weird when people got a whole like energy drink super alcohol binge thing. Yeah, it's kinda crazy. High gravity, like, well I like whoa. people are like <laughs> It's like super beer. Yeah, you, can't, you can't like get so amped up on caffeine you don't even feel how drunk you are. What's the point then? Right. You wanna feel drunk, right? Yeah, when it came down to me though, like college student, it was it was one ninety nine for the forty ounce. Oh well, yeah. So I had to go for it. Yeah, yeah, when you when you're poor and you're stealing chicken sandwiches out of the cafeteria in your backpack. I may have done that. <laughs> uh, for extra meals later in the day. Well I may have stolen like twenty in one day. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> Chicken sandwiches. I, I, had a, I had a random thought here. All right. Today, I was going down One Way Street to grab a delivery. Sounds like a song. A, going uh, down One Way Street. Aerosmith. Soul Asylum. Yeah. Right? Hell yeah. Soul anyway. Asylum. Never coming back. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no, going up the street. And uh, <laughs> there's, a tr- <laughs> there's a truck that Soul turns Asylum. on its, uh, its hazard lights. Oh, yeah. And stops. In the middle of the road. In the middle of the one way road. Fucking with the dick. parking on both sides. So there's no way to get past. A cop pulling behind me. And I'm like, I'm going to wait for this cop to do something. Maybe yeah, like, he's going to do something. Pulls behind me. He waits. <laughs> like, like, bad enough. So I roll out my window and I go, "Hey, move it!" <laughs> and then they pulled over the shoulder and we both drove by. Yeah, that's fucking ridiculous. But yeah, like, everybody's people... like, because that's one of those streets where the parking's always full, and so every person blocks up traffic, yeah. waiting for the one guy to get in. Yeah, we'll check everything. Whoops. Hey now, Sorry. hey Sorry. now. Check everything and uh, your hands are everywhere. Put the uh, <laughs> put, your hands. put the uh, seat belts and uh, oh, passengers yeah, the seat belts. back up a little bit. Pull forward. Oh it's my a pain god! In the ass. When you're waiting for a spot and right. you see the That's guy get I'm in there, about. and like I remember, we were in Galena. I remember that we were on a family trip. You, me, and the parents. And like we were, in, and we we're like, because you have to park on the street there, because there's no like parking ramps. And, like, there were these people that, like, got in their car, and you have to wait in, like, the street, because it's all, like, parallel parking, and these people get in their car, and it's, like, a minute, and you're, like, what the fuck are you doing? Pull out and drive! <laughs> like, Jesus! And find we, another street and park, I know. And for then, fuck's sake. And then we had to, like, we had if to drive by. If they built a parking structure in Galena, it'd be the tallest building. Oh, I know, because there's no, there's no parking. There's um, no, no three but I have buildings. a parking story I from this week. Town. <laughs> You, you ever been to the Culver's up uh, in Middleton? The one uh, mm-hmm. on there? So that has the absolute worst drive through ever. Because when it's busy, it snakes around like behind the parking lot. So if you park, you get fucked. Because I'm going to tell you something right in. now. I don't trust any Culver's drive through Why? Because they make you pull ahead and wait yeah. when there's nobody fucking behind you. It happened to me! It pisses me off. I know! <laughs> I say, hey! That. Say, hey, I want to stay here by the window. Yeah. Why are you having me move my head when there's no one behind me? I'm here at 3.30. I'll go there's in. There's no one behind me. Right. Uh, and I ordered just a shake, so it's not going to take that long. Why am You're I pulling so forward? so used to telling everyone to pull forward. No, but I, I got stuck behind traffic, and I would pull, and like, I'm just stuck. I can't pull out. There are people, fucking hate people. There are people, I'm just saying this now, because Lauren and I parked and we're like, okay, the line for the drive-thru is all the way to like the entrance of the parking lot. So there's like seven cars deep. We're like, let's just pull into a parking spot, the one right in the end so we can sneak out, run in, grab food, come out. We had to wait ten minutes for our goddamn, we just ordered two Sundays. It took ten minutes. It was ludicrous. And there were 8,000 children in T-ball shirts. So somebody's game just There's ended. There's always 8,000 I could not. It was 8.30! 8.30! Why are you eating dinner at 8.30? It's always a volleyball team. Anyway. Yeah, I know, right? It was just a bunch of kids. And then we get out. And there are people 
I swear to God, parked in the street waiting to get in the parking lot of Culver's. Yeah. It's like, at this point, you drive away right. because you're not going to wait Go in a street else. to get into a parking lot <laughs> of a fucking fast food restaurant. And so I try and pull out. I have to wait for them to move forward, and then I can pull out, and then I have to wait in the goddamn drive through line to get out of the parking lot. And then in front of me, some fucking lady starts backing out and driving out of the exit. She, like, turns the other way and starts driving towards us. <laughs> and everyone's, like, facing this way, one lane, and she's, like, facing the other way. And it's like, I will murder you. What <laughs> are you doing? It is one way! And, oh, my God. It was so... I was so pissed, and I got so angry, and I hate that place. Yeah. I cannot stand it. I just laugh when I see people drive down one way, it's the wrong way, and... Uh... The big street in Madison. Yeah, because all of it is one way. <laughs> I saw it a couple there. days ago. I don't even like raise an eyebrow now. I just, I'm like, is he gonna be smart enough to try to pull a U-turn, or is he just gonna keep driving? Just keep that going. Way? Yeah, I saw, I saw that a couple of months ago. Just a guy like pulling onto the wrong side of a median. And it's just, it's, it's just the waiting game to see like how long they go before they realize, oh wait, this isn't right. <laughs> I am. Why am I? The left side so much. <laughs> a lot of do not enter signs over here. I don't know what that's about. It's just great. You see them going, 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 and you see the red lights just like go up. And you're like, oh, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? The worst though is when you go down like a street, like a residential street that's one way that doesn't have a lot of signs, and you turn onto it, and like you're driving for a while, like a lot of cars are facing me uh, right. on the street. Like, why is it both sides? And you're like, I always, oh shit! I take pulling behind fucking people without a state license plates. And they're driving fucking 15 miles an hour. I'm trying to find my friend's apartment. It's like, asshole, I know you got GPS, you rich prick. <laughs> <laughs> Illinois. Right? Minnesota. Right? Rich this guy's still driving 15 miles an hour. Get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll right. tell you what. That's what we, got, we got something to talk about, though. We do have some topics. First of all, is uh, Office TV show. Yeah, is it's that still on. It's coming back. Coming back. Got I heard there was a couple more cast members. I don't think so. Far, none of we have lost Steve Carell. Steve Carell. You've lost most. Now of they're, the really, <laughs> they're going to lose Ryan. Uh, really? And he said they, he was done for the season. He's leaving. Okay. He's without things to do. And uh, the and Kelly. third forty in quotation marks. Kelly, the uh, his love interest. Yeah, they kind of went off. I mean, Kelly's an all right character. And sometimes it's hilarious, but whatever. But Ryan was one of my Ryan's favorites. Ryan's more key to it. I saw that uh, Kelly was going to be on like some sort of nursing show. Like she's going to be no, she's going to be a doctor. Right. And so I'm like, except she's going to you know get into people's hearts and be you know kind. Oh, this high I don't life. know. It looks terrible. This like high a, life is awful. It's delicious. <laughs> it's the champagne of beer. I enjoyed that Coors <laughs> way more. We had the banquet beer, the champagne of beers. We got Silver Bullet and just Bud Light. Bud Light doesn't have a nickname. Yeah. The BL, as it's BL. Term. The BL. <laughs> well, we were talking about how the more the more of the of the office you watch, the more you start to hate Jim Halpert. Yeah, and I had told John this like a year and a half ago. Okay, I hadn't realized and he yet. was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I think it's really funny. He I is. think the show's better than ever. Like everything he said, he was like still on the okay, office. You're train. exaggerating a little bit. Here. Okay. I didn't say it was better than ever. <laughs> I said that it's not terrible. I yet. realized it went to shit like at least a season before you. Yeah. <laughs> when you were like, oh, it really is bad. <laughs> I was holding strong. I loved it. I watched all season seven. Seven was where it went shit. Like, I, I believe it was season? strong to season six, and then seven... When did Steve Carell leave? Was season eight? I don't fucking know, dude. I don't know. I watched till he left, and it was just painful to watch each episode, because it was, it was like a good episode every five, you know? All right. It's pretty bad. But yeah, but Jim's kind of but an Jim asshole. Albert, what did you say about Jim? Like, yeah. To sum it, summarize <laughs> it in a sentence here? No, like... So, like, Jim, like, it's uh, the series starts off with him, like, constantly trying to steal this guy's girlfriend. Yeah. And then he works... It, not at, girlfriend, fiance. fiance. He's not trying to steal her, though. He's just kind of, like, hanging out, and then he's just, like, slowly kind of horning in, like, real, like, He slow. is really creeping on her. Yeah. And then, and so then, like, the whole time he's To be fair, that guy is a huge douchebag. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they made him out to be a huge yeah. douchebag. He's not as bad as the guy in the British show, though. 
No, the guy in the British well, the show is like an asshole. The guy in the British show would just be like, well, come home and I'll bang you. Here's the thing. That's all you're good for. The guy, the guy in the I'm American one was just like normal. Yeah. Here's the, here's the thing, though. The uh, the guy in the American show, or uh, Roy, right? Yeah, 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 Roy. He has kind of uh, poo-pooed her little art career. Yeah, yeah. And that is oh. what Jim uses to get it. However... Her art career goes nowhere the rest of her it's life. True. It's she true. gives up on it later. Yeah. He knew it was right for her all along. He's playing her. He yeah. <laughs> Jim was using the weakness, and Roy was saying, no, like, you need to put that behind you. It's not going anywhere. You know what's a good thing, too? He was right. You know, what's interesting about the <laughs> British office is that it ended at the point where you thought you had hope for the characters. Like, you're like, oh, you know, the uh, Tim is going to go off and do something else. He's going to go oh, to college, that yeah. girl is going to go off with him, and they're going to have a good time together, because they're finally together after all of this. Right. And, oh, David Brent met this lady, and he seems to not be crazy around her, so maybe he'll be a better person now. Right. And on the, Brit- on the American one, it's like, oh, yeah, Pam wanted to go to school for graphic design. Oh, yeah, she quit, and she's bad. And now she just works at her old job again. Hey, and that's the thing. And they're having kids, and that's it with your life. Helper, like, uh, helper, what? Uh, where did you go? Helper's become ridiculously condescending. To yeah, everyone. like he works at this job, but it's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to be done here. Like at the start of this, hey, Jim, at the guess start of what? the series. Have you gotten a promotion in eight years? <laughs> it's just like, no, what? you haven't actually. He's constantly making fun of these people Why who's working you by, there. Jim? <laughs> And then he's still working there. He's like, oh, I'm better than these people. While but some fuck fucking them. mental midget from another company gets promoted ahead of him. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, two. How many more bosses he had? I mean, for God's sake. He's like, I don't love the promotion because I'm too good for it. Yeah. That's what an ass this guy is. Yeah. He, like, like, he doesn't love the promotion, but he's going to bitch about every decision that his superiors make. You could have like, had that In job. reality, if you worked with this guy, you'd want to punch him in the face every day. Oh, I know. That's why the show was at its best when it had Idris Silva... As the boss, Idris Elba, where he was a huge Silva. dick. <laughs> Idris Silva, I don't know. What is that uh, Anderson Silva's brother? I was going to say other yeah, yeah, MMA, MMA fighter, fighter. Idris Silva. I thought I had it right. You were close. Okay? I thought you were very close. But I liked it because he put the heat on Jim. Mm-hmm. And it's like fuck you, Jim. <laughs> what? Well, it was totally great too, because Jim would just be like, "Oh well, you know, we're just having fun." Uh, he like gets to a point where he's concerned about his like getting. The bread on the table, and I loved it. I was like, "Yeah, fuck that guy." It was so funny, <laughs> and he was like promoting everybody else, yeah. or, or giving them all. Uh... It was just funny because, like, <laughs> oh, but that's amazing too. Because like, he like is like thinks Jim is a joke though, and then like he starts to be thinking like, "Oh, this Dwight guy has really got it," and then like right. Dwight's like. We need to make sure all women never wear shirts that have sleeves. It's like, uh, this guy <laughs> is fucking crazy. <laughs> like, the whole season he's, like, defending Dwight until Dwight... That was pretty good. That was a good yeah, season. I, did like I that thought that part. was the last, the last time the show I liked the had, last like, season with Steve Carell, too. That wasn't too bad. But after he left, it kind of was like, it didn't really know where it was at. There are some good episodes from the last season. Particularly the one where Andy... Has to get and I mean, back. Like, when, when we're ripping on the show, oh, yeah. which we are. Yeah. The uh, I mean, any show that's been around this long, it's tough to stay. The fresh. thing is, yeah. the thing is, it is it is it better than like Friends was at this point? Of course it is. But it still is like <laughs> nagging on me. The more well, Friends I watch had a live it. studio audience, so it was kind of lame. Yeah. They filmed all those like scenes where it's like, oh Chandler. <laughs> You know, because they have like the the apartment. I didn't know sets. that was live. They studio. had the sets, man, wow. for the apartments, and they, there's laugh tracks and that. I hated all those fucking people. Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> so I just okay. I just didn't like any of them. Oh, I don't it's know. Joey. Oh, Joey. Right? Oh wait, that oh. failed. That's why. Yeah. That's why. I'm a paleontologist, <laughs> David Schwimmer. That's I hate talked. you. <laughs> That's pretty much how he talked. And then somehow then you see that David, man had sex with Jennifer Aniston. Then you the, see David, according to that You see show. David Schwimmer and other stuff, and you think he's great, though. Oh, I know. He's well, great in Curb. Curb Enthusiasm. Curb Enthusiasm. He's really good as an asshole. Really in fun, that. At, fun at like, kind of making fun of himself. And, and uh, what was the other uh, band of brothers? Yeah, he's great. He's, he's great. He? Well, he plays an asshole very well. Which is what we all thought he was. Exactly. But the show thought he was lovable, and we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to talk about Kirby Enthusiasm, though, because I did start watching that recently, because I did get HBO Go, and I've been watching it, like, religiously, and Jesus, that show is awesome. Like, 
there's points where I'll watch it for like four episodes and I'm like, oh, I'm getting bored of this show. Right. And something amazing will happen. And I will Usually like, when Marty Funkhauser arrives. Like, I la- <laughs> like, I'm sitting there and I'm not laughing. You're not you initiated, know? Eric. And, and yeah. you just sit like <laughs> watching a show by yourself and you don't laugh, you know, because you're by yourself so you don't right. feel like you're going to laugh. But I'm usually like that where I won't laugh. But then every once in a while that show will just get me with something that'll happen... Or some like crazy callback to something, and I would just laugh like, and it's crazy, <laughs> and it's hard to watch sometimes. I just watched the season six finale after the divorce. That was the was Seinfeld they... reunion no, season. No. No. That was the season where um, with the blacks, oh with yeah, the, the family. Or... Great. Um, yeah, but did they, were they planning on finishing the show after that season? They, every the... season has been because that, that season of... ended with. A, like epilogue of him getting married to the black lady and her being the best wife possible I, for him because she's such a I sassy believe lady. Every every season since about season five or six, yeah, they've ended with the thought it could be the last episode, but not yeah. known. But HBO will never cancel the show. As <laughs> it's not that. It's, it's it. whether Larry David wants to do That's it. That's true, and I could imagine. I mean, he takes a he takes a year off to and decide. He's like, let's do it again, and then they do it again, or they don't. You know. <laughs> Like, will they do another season now? I don't know. I really love They have eight seasons. Uh, that, uh, who's the guy in that show? I love the, the one who's where the, he's who's... stretching his legs out and he trips Shaq. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Shaq, like, sprains his ankle and, like, gives him a look. Yeah. And then, like, he sends Shaq, like, a bunch of Seinfeld tapes in the hospital because he's a huge Seinfeld fan and, it, like, makes up for it. Doesn't he get, like, the team doctor fired, too, or something? Oh, I don't know. It's crazy. But I would definitely watch that show. Um, who, was the name of the black guy? The, the, the... I think the best season so uh, far is the last season, though. What's his name, though? The... The, the black guy that's his best oh, friend. Oh, Leon? Leon. I that couldn't think of his name. That guy's amazing. He is amazing. Yeah. He I have is, seen a few episodes. He is such an instant. That's why like season Leon. eight's the best. Well, like in season six, when you first meet him, there's like a point where like Larry thinks he's missing his like uh, Yankees jersey. And like he sees like Ken Jeong, who plays this guy. Right. Um, who's out, like, walking around with the jersey, and he's like, I think that's my jersey. Yeah, it's this random, like, weird Yankees player nobody else would have a jersey of. And he's like, that's my jersey. And Leon's like, that's your jersey? I'm fucking your jersey. <laughs> he, like, gets out and, like, starts yelling at this random person on the street, and you're like, you, sit, you, see, you can't hear what he's saying, but you see the guy taking off the jersey and, like, handing it to him. And you're like, this guy's badass. Like, he's going to take care of it. And then he sees the jersey, like, a block later on someone else. Oh, God. And he's like, oh. This this is too small. Like that's my jersey. He's like, well, I'm getting your fucking jersey. We get out again. That show is really good. I don't want to explain it too much more, right. but I, I I knew it would be good. But I really enjoy it. It does have a, like slow moments, but mm-hmm. it definitely. I think though the the last season was the season where it's the one where it doesn't have those moments. Where the season eight, I thought really just it was just constant they laugh for every episode. But anyway. Enough yeah. about TV. Yeah. What else have we got? Um, oh, we did... We got an itinerary. We did write down some topics ahead of time. To uh, All right, we went through Jim Halpert. Wes Anderson dick. films. We're going to go into that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I will go into all of them. I, still, I actually am going to... Moonrise s- Kingdom. I'm going to see that tomorrow because I did want to see it. What? Dude, it looks great. It Is has, there another good... It has like, like a 99 Rotten Tomatoes. Like, supposedly whimsical. That's just on video. You hate any movie that doesn't have explosions in it. What is he one? Any there, movie? there was an independent movie that I wanted to see. Uh, what was it? Oh yeah, the one about uh, the guy. Dark Knight Rises. Mur- and sorry, we're back. Uh, there's technical difficulties. My computer, I touched it and it stopped recording because it's <laughs> fucking bullshit. That's fine. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we brought a list of topics. Went through Jim Halpert equals dick. We did that. Um, next one, uh, we can talk about the blackout that happened recently. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what happened with you? I was in the middle of a Tribes Ascend amazing <laughs> multiplayer video gaming <laughs> session where I'm raping dudes with my turrets and killing everybody, wow. and then I see the lights flicker, and I'm like, oh It definitely god. flickered. Oh god. And I'm like, oh no, this match is in overtime, we haven't finished, and I'm like, just, there's like five minutes left, and it's just like... I'm like, no! <laughs> Darkness! <laughs> and then it came back on for a second and then went yep, again. Yep. And I was like, you fucking asses! Like, oh, I was so pissed. Right. I was... Oh. It was around, yeah, it was like 1240. Yeah, it was, yeah. 
Well, it was like... It's about 45 minutes of Blackout. And, of course, I started playing this video game at 11.30, being like, I got 30 minutes, I'll go to bed at midnight. And then I look up and it's 12.40, of course. That's what always happens. But what what happened with you? Okay, so here's what I was doing. Oh, yeah, because I remember reading your Facebook. (laughs) Okay, so I was drinking. Well, talk about your hours. (laughs) So you, you work... You work at like noon till like ten, right? Or um, on call ish around one or two. Right, and then I then I well basically that day I was just doing five to ten. Yeah. So you work nights and I so you stay up late. I had a horrible day. I had a... so it was blistering heat all day. Oh god. Until nine thirty. Until when tornado fucking storm. <laughs> thunderstorm, like lightning storm oh, happened. I know. So I did and we got busier right before close, so I had to do all these orders in the fucking Lightning and shit, and the yeah. thunder and the rain getting so Oklahoma City thunder. It's doing all that, so I'm already clocking an extra half hour and getting nothing for it other than the the orders the I'm making. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I come back. I'm just like God, it's so miserable. It's like you know what? This you know what? I'm I'm gonna do something to. I'm looking to, about this the wrong way. What's the phrase? I'm gonna reward myself for this day. Yeah. I, I'm going to go eat at Perkins. <laughs> you ate at, you ate at per, were you at Perkins during the outage? No. Oh, that would have been amazing. I went to Perkins, though. And What'd you get? Anything good? I got some something with uh, eggs and hash browns. Nice. And, a breakfast. Uh, nice. Uh, Perkins <laughs> is the place to get breakfast at like 11 p.m. Right. When you're like enjoying I didn't know they just served beer there. I was going to get a beer, but I had beer in my car, so whatever. Uh, so you drank it in your car in between no. bites. <laughs> Anyway, you had your coat and you just sipped I do it. that. I'm like, okay, bad energy out, <laughs> good energy yeah, in. We had, enjoy. we had Perkins. We'll go back, take a shower, get on the right track with this beer. After that, you know, so I do that. I, I'm on my third beer. Fucking powers out. Oh, <laughs> I have nothing. And you to, saw the flicker, right? Nothing to do. Yeah, the flicker. <laughs> I'm you like, got comics oh, to oh, read. oh, we're good. No, oh, it's out. <laughs> And yeah, I had uh, I was reading comics on my computer, drinking, yeah. and uh, so then I'm like, I don't have my flashlight because I fucking put it in a box mm. while I was moving. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, so I sit there and I'm like drinking beer in the dark. <laughs> for, <laughs> I have to kill the beer I'm on anyway. Yeah, but then I was like, I was at that crossroads. Do you go to sleep early, like way early, <laughs> or do you drink beer in the dark? And I'm like, I will drink beer in the dark. I was like using my lighter for light, and I was drinking it. And then I, I started using my phone as light, and I started reading a, another book while I was waiting. And it was just like, like the, ridiculous. Like the and Ham just... is snoring unbeknownst to the world the whole time in the next room. <laughs> like I'm like, I wonder if Ham woke up because he fell asleep with his lights on. No, nope. and then he's like. <laughs> yeah, that. Oh my god, he's the loudest snorer. And well, uh, Eric is. Oh, bad whatever. Too. Adam's <laughs> awful though, and the way that Adam sleeps is ridiculous. And we've talked about this, where you know when like you and I and Adam would stay up late, like hanging out, and then right. he would just be like laying on like the bed, and he would just hear him be like. <laughs> and we were just sitting there, and and we'd be like, "Hey, Adam," we'd be like, "What? What?" And I was like, "Were you just asleep?" No, I'm not sleeping. It's like He's you like were a- sleeping. <laughs> when you make snoring noises when you're awake, you don't. He's like an old person. I know. <laughs> he is. He's like Grandpa Simpson. He's like, oh, I'm awake. <laughs> like out of nowhere, Jesus. Oh. Yeah. And the uh, what was the other thing? Well, I had a great story. I, I, I might as well get off my well, Yeah, let's get to it, okay? Break. But, uh, so we got John moving into my room with his girlfriend. That's true. And, uh, I want to make the place look nice, you know? I've been cleaning it up. Yeah. I've been, it's... uh, but there's, you know, they have this policy in our place. Whoa. Whoop. Eric, don't knock over cans. Alright, you get policy. What go. You do? I, I, go. <laughs> Yeah, it's Did you knock awesome. something over? I don't, we're no, we're good. All I right, just set right. the empty beer down so it wouldn't fall over again. All right. Anyway, so I'm, I'm 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 cleaning up the place. I'm scrubbing out spots on the floor, all this stuff. And uh, I I notice, you know, because they have this policy where we work, 
Get off your phone, bro. You're going to enjoy this. No, I was this just policy, looking up stories. We have Sorry. this policy, not where we work, but where, uh, where we live, where they'll just fucking paint white on everything when people move out. Holy shit. Like they on the, the molding the around the floor. White. It is just fucking bleach, <laughs> like bone white. Like, it is a fucking desert in here. And it's shitty paint. Because yeah. if you touch it, it makes marks on the walls. Yeah. And anywhere anybody sleeps, their bed will create these marks on the walls. Yeah. Like from sweat or, or oh, your hand the, dirt. Oh, the crazy stuff. hand dirt rings. And I know if I'm moving out, they're not going to do this stuff on the wall. They're not going to... Yeah, because I'm just taking a room. Exactly. So they're not going to re... Because basically what they said, I ta- they talk about this, is like every time someone moves out, they repaint. Every time. Which They're like, is, don't worry about it. Just, just paint with good paint, you assholes. Yeah, they repaint. <laughs> yeah, because it's like porous paint that soaks up like sweat and skin and breath. So like where the beds are, no you, can see this darkened, you can see this darkened ring on the wall where the bed was. Because right. that's where you've been breathing or sweating or touching with your hands, <laughs> right. you know? And so it's just coming off on these walls because it's shitty paint. And there's also if lead anything paint, too. Co- so. any, uh, <laughs> Don't forget about the lead paint, because yeah. you had to sign the disclosure saying, we know there's lead paint. It's under like 40 if, layers of paint. Right. Yeah. If any object touches the wall, it makes a fucking black mark. It's ridiculous. It, it is, anyway, so I'm like, well... Make them gray or right. orange. Or yeah, off. make them gray. Make well, this place super depressing. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know that beige yellow kind of color where you can't see... I really think is, all they have to do is add, have better paint. Eric, stop. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm blaming everything on you. <laughs> I think it, the headphones. I really think though, the all they have to do is use better paint, and they won't have to paint as much. Yeah. And these assholes paint over the trim. They paint over the doors. They paint over the fucking like fuse box. Yeah, the fuse box is painted to the There's wall. There's a handle on the fuse box that has a drip that goes through the middle yeah. of paint. It's like years of being painted <laughs> over. It's literally. <laughs> I want to use the fuse box. I pull the handle out. It's fucking stuck. Yeah. It's been painted off. It's literally the first time you use it's a fuse box. It's out of control. It's a goddamn slag tie. Yeah. The first time you use a fuse box, you basically have to like stick a knife under there to right. cut the paint so you can <laughs> yank it open because it has been painted shut. It is ridiculous. It's like, what kind of assholes? Anyway. It's so, got to look white. It's got to be a uniform color, Lance. Right. Jesus. It's just common sense. Anyway. Also, we're going to drop a bulb and shatter it all over your bathroom, your bedroom, or whatever that. Yeah. Remember that guy? Jesus. Anyway. Oh, we can get <laughs> he into dropped that a too. giant fluorescent bulb. Yeah, he's bulb. fixing the fluorescent light. <laughs> Fuckhead drops it. Yeah. It's like, dude, shatters. You had one job. <laughs> <laughs> to change. Presumably, he does this all light. the time, too. Like, this isn't his first time around the light bulb. Like, he's done this. Right. And Supposedly. It, he's just like. To talking about to Adam, I don't know. Actually, Adam doesn't talk to people, so probably Adam was like staring at him during his job. It's probably freaking <laughs> out. Nodding along. Oh yeah, yeah. I think oh, we're busy oh, this oh, afternoon. Oh, oh. Oh. Good, quite a job there. Yeah. Yeah. Small talk. Yeah. Oh, you gotta take that plastic grate off. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, uh, yeah. Fuckhead. Yeah. Bullshit. Kirk <laughs> crash. Thanks for the phosphorus. Whatever. Yeah. My just don't breathe too much cancer <laughs> in. Oh, it's okay. It's just the kitchen where I make food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fine. But seriously, anyway. if you were fixing something at your dad's barn when you were 14 and you did that. Yeah, we did What this. happens? Your dad yells at you like yeah. crazy And makes person. you clean it up. And you don't do the it guy, again. This fucking guy doesn't clean it up. He does, or does he? He, well, he like picks up the big pieces. Yeah. Like, oh, there might be some shards there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll do it. <laughs> well, no. What happened was, and Adam told me about this, is that like he got like a shot back or whatever, but he had like walk away and get it because he didn't have it. And then he like cleans it up and like you know vacuums it up and sweeps and everything. He's like, all right, well. We don't want to go in here barefoot. There might be some shards I didn't get. Right, <laughs> it's right. like, uh, okay, vacuum again because I don't want fucking shards in my floor because you were an asshole. Right? Like, Jesus. I mean, come on. I'm not fucking McLean here. I'm not going to walk across <laughs> this bullshit. So anyway. He walks across broken glass. Come on. I'm touching. Classic diehard moment. I know oh, he's, John. I know he's, he's, yeah. Okay. I, I got you. He's going. I'm John already. I so picked it up. Claimed. I picked it up. All right, got I picked it. Up. I'm touching up the walls. I handed it off, <laughs> and you grabbed it, unlike a running back. I got the machine gun now. Ho, ho, ho. Packers gotcha. And didn't drop it. Go on. Anyway, go. <laughs> touching up the walls. And uh, 
I noticed and you bought that pink can of yeah, the white. I've had that. Yeah, you, I you should get it, one. Remix it up. Yeah, getting all the spots and stuff, yeah. making sure everything looks nice. I can't dock you for security getting deposit. Drunk while I'm doing it. <laughs> Hell yeah, doing it real classy. You can't, life. You can't imagine <laughs> it, drunk painting, baby. It's the wave of the future. My worst nightmare comes true. <gasps> I kick over the paint can while I'm drunk. <laughs> this fucking puddle of paint the size of a plate that's just sitting there. In right. the carpet? Yes. <laughs> Lance, I'm moving in here. <laughs> what the shit? And I'm like, I did the same thing. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I, I immediately, I'm like. You bolt. I'm like. It's water based. We can get it fixed or whatever. So I run to the kitchen and I grab like a rag and uh, my towels that I just okay cleaned. Lance, you use newspaper. You put it on newspaper. Well, you put I the was can on touching up. Oh, okay. Well, he was drunk and I was drunk. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I'm glad that you've crushed my room with a giant white spot. Of paint in the corner, yeah. right? It's in the <laughs> corner. <laughs> What's up? It's in the corner. Yes. That's not so bad then. And I, Who was in the middle of the floor? Be, I'm be just bad. like, oh. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm taking like anything that absorbs water, and I'm getting, I don't have any like. I grab a mug out of a dirty dishes, I like fill it with water. I'm just pouring it onto the spot and trying to soak it up with towels. Okay, <laughs> adding water, <laughs> yeah. soaking it up, doing all that. Yeah. Wiping sweat from my face, just being like, oh, oh, like scrubbing it, and, and it's like, oh, it looks worse. It's like it's spreading. <laughs> <laughs> I keep running. I keep repeating, doing the same thing over and over again. And I, just, oh, you're like, fuck it, let's make this whole carpet white. <laughs> and what's going on? on? And I'm just <laughs> drenching this towels of water. It's scrubbing my ass off. And then I'm still drunk though. And I got, and I got, <laughs> I, got I got my hands got paint and stuff on them. And I'm like, uh, I'm walking. And, and the towels, I step on one of the towels, which has absorbed a shitload of paint, yeah. and that fucking leaves a mark on the floor. <laughs> I'm like, no! <laughs> so I, I, have, I have like three marks on the floor, and, I, and then I look over, the paintbrush is on the floor over there, and I'm like, what the hell? Paintbrush! Okay. Stop. And I take the- <laughs> Stop the story. <laughs> Listeners, the whole time. do not paint while drunk, because you will shit everything out. <laughs> So, this is an amazing story. So I, get, I look over, I take that, I take that, I put it on my desk, right? All right. There, and I'm like, where's my beer? And I put my beer, it's on my DVD player, which I'm putting in a box or something. Yeah. And I just like big drink out of it, put it down, <laughs> and then I like, swipe, wipe the sweat from my face. So I'm like, <gasps> like I'm all fucking sprinting around here. I'm like, this is like, this is like, it has to be done now. It's time of, of the essence, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so anyway, I get it, look at, and I, I don't have anything to dry anything with uh, on the carpet to make sure it looks good. Yeah. So I just take my comforter and I'm just like <laughs> rubbing it in the carpet. I just, I just want to stop the story for a second. <laughs> I just really hope the story, as I'm moving into your room, ends with, and everything looked perfect. Right. I you, hope. You hope. What? <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, Whoa. Anyway. Okay. Um. We the lie. final, the, the final nail in the coffin on this horrendous event was I was scrubbing and I, I swinged my arm around. Oh and I, no! And I knocked the beer on my DVD player over, and it's a DVD player the soaked in beer. <laughs> and you the floor are beneath. a fucking <laughs> monster. <laughs> Like Everything I did was just a disaster. Like three stooges. Right? <laughs> you were a, you were a single stooge. You didn't need anyone else for your antics. And then okay, so I got it all cleaned and stuff, and I'm like, I'm gonna have to like, if I want to save these towels, I'm I'm gonna have to like uh, wash them off. I take them in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of do that. And I'm like, they're full of paint. It just doesn't. So I have to, to go get my laundry card and and wash them and dry yeah, yeah, to yeah. save the towels. Exactly. And so I do right that. Right now, well, they're still wet. Yeah. I do that. I look back. I come back in. They're they're in the washer. And I'm like, oh, okay, I got to get rid of this paint <laughs> this can. This is not going to end well. He has this paint can here. And I'm like, I put it on my desk. I got the brush on my <laughs> desk <laughs> just to make sure that the fucking things aren't going to put any more paint on the floor where yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, oh, I gotta close it. So take the hammer. And I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> okay, stop. Before you say this, Lance raised his hand all the way into the air, <laughs> ready to hammer. And I hit the, the, the top lid to, to seal it, <laughs> and the fucking paint goes all over my computer screen. <laughs> In my speakers. <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> you weren't thinking. I you was were drunk. The, I was just like, I gotta close it. <laughs> I'm like, get it. I'm like, no! <laughs> like, everything is going wrong. <laughs> and, and so I'm trying to, I still got white on my speakers because you cannot get that out of the, the screen on the. Oh, the little, uh, the film. The film, screen. whatever, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, in front of them. Right. <laughs> oh, I like how you keep recapping your 40 here, Eric. Your 40, in quotation marks. Yeah, what are you doing, man? Uh, I actually took my cap and I was playing around with it in my hand and bent it out of shape so I could never cap this again. <laughs> so, uh, screw you. I don't want anything getting into the middle of like high a, life. We got a 40 break here. Let's see, where are we at? Yeah, the status report here? I'm about half. Uh, half. About uh, half-ish? A little bit past half, maybe? Uh, I don't know about I'm that. About the 40, take it. 48%. Take a take quick a break? break? Yeah, we can take a break. Yeah, sure. All right, and we're back. I'm sorry, but uh, I messed around with the levels a lot before we started this, so this may be different sounding than the first half. And I apologize. I think the levels look good now. Lance, can you talk a little bit? Yes. Uh, so oh, yes, my name is Lance. Eric was... Uh, this is good. Eric, talk? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, oh, All right, sorry. that's good. That's good. <laughs> Your mic picks up a lot better than ours. It does, yeah. Because it's a uh, stage mic where these two other ones are recording mics. Okay. So. Anyway, all right. Uh, yeah, let's go back into your story. Uh, you uh, we took a break. Yeah. So, and everyone go, grabs a beer, gets situated. And Eric goes to the bathroom. We're going to take a leak. What happened? Yeah, so I'm on the back half of a 40, so i got to take a piss. And I go to lift up the toilet Yo, seat. No, I didn't take a piss. I should have. So I go to lift up the toilet seat. We got seat, another hour here. And the front half of it just comes off and just falls on the floor. And I think I break it. But oh, no. it shatters on the floor? But oh. no. The toilet seat has been severed in half <laughs> previously. <laughs> okay. So can we can we get the story on yeah, okay. what happened there? I just there? want to say this, is that I read about the toilet seat breaking like three days ago. This has been discussed on the podcast. I'll just have, <laughs> have you know. Okay. I did not no, know. It has not. The original yes. crack has been... But there was but the completion second crack, of the breaking. <laughs> there was an argument between me and Adam between who, who made who the, started first, the crack. first crack. Who cracked half of it? All right. <laughs> to be fair, we're all, gate. we're all a bunch of big guys. So. And I said it was Ham, and he denied it ve- vehemently. And I still think it's him. Uh, he could be. And I definitely caused the second crack. <laughs> oh. I was in there. You, was this the same night that you were flustered painting? <laughs> we were just like, oh, I sit in the toilet. Oh, gosh. I think it was a day before. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, so you're just having a week full of fun. Right. And uh, and so, yeah. So now it's it's severed. The front half of the, the part where you sit is disconnected from the rest of the toilet seat. Okay. And... So then Eric went to lift it up. And <laughs> he just basically pulled the front off. Cost a ruckus. <laughs> I remember we were sitting here chatting, and we hear in the bathroom just a bunch of clanking, and Eric going, oh, God! Right? I thought you had sat on it to like take a crap or something. Oh, and if you would have done that, it would have been amazing, because there's no toilet paper in there. No. Because Lance and Adam have a ground war against their toilet paper. <laughs> they both it's cannot agree upon toilet war paper. War of attrition. <laughs> because neither of them can agree on who buys toilet paper and what like speed they use the toilet paper right. at. It's like a it's like Larry David here. You guys are just like, <laughs> You use more toilet paper than me, so you should buy more. It's like you use more toilet paper. You and guys. I have the same thing. With the trash bags. I think he uses more trash bags than I do. I fucking... Adam really does generate a lot of garbage. <laughs> I mean, look I, at his room right now. The garbage pile I, I think, is begun. And that's, that that leads into the the uh, toilet paper okay, dispute. Okay, so let's talk about Adam here, since he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> uh, so he buys... I swear. Food for the guy every gets meal. one meal, and the trash bag's half full. I know. 
Well, he's so like, oh, oh, well, I, it was all the sides. <laughs> I was a plastic thing at the bottom. But he gets take out every goddamn meal because he doesn't cook. Right. It's ridiculous. Lance orders food a lot, right? You go to fast food, but you yeah. still will make stuff every once in a while. Right. You'll make ham or like hot dogs. Oh, or, or, I, or I eat at work. Yeah, um, yeah. Or you'll get, you know, pizza, frozen pizza, like any normal person. Right. And Adam's like, no, fuck that. Order expensive food every meal, right. like glass nickel every meal. Trash he pile, is ridiculous. He like, cannot break the habit of stockpiling trash in his room. <laughs> it has continued for half a decade. Oh my god, it's crazy! Like it happened in his old room. I remember in his old room uh, when we were living together in the three bedroom apartment, yeah. the apartment eighty three, which was almost the name of this podcast. Um, and he had. Like, really no room in his room because it was so, like, small with his giant bed and giant TV. Like, because he's got an old CRT <laughs> TV. Funny. I got so the like medium-sized room. He got yeah. the small one. Well, we rolled, got the big we, one. we rolled dice for it. I got the big one. I had to pay more. You paid second most. He paid, you know, it was fair. Right. I paid, you know, like 30 bucks more than Adam did. But I had a, my own bathroom, which was really nice. <laughs> or my own toilet, at least. Which was used by See, Lance. Here's the thing about secretly, what, as like, I found why out. Why you lost it? Gone, and Eric passed out. In yeah, my I vaguely room. remember waking up in that bathroom. <laughs> yeah, great. I'm glad my bathroom while I'm gone is being used for vomit sessions oh, and pass out sessions. I threw up a lot in that. I'm room. glad. Well, that was you... that was not my fault. That was just Eric being <laughs> a No, I remember you watch. threw Eric into my room <laughs> and locked the door, and we're like, "Don't leave until you're sober." Let's not forget the collateral damage of my bed in that night <laughs> when <laughs> PD and my guitar. I was well, a force yeah, that of was nature. my fault. And, and my and, camp chair. And your camp chair was my fault. You basically okay. So Eric basically got real liquored up, and everyone told him to break everything, <laughs> and he did. You, you were like I was a tool. I was not. I had no control. <laughs> you were like over you were the, you were, as NRA would say. You were like the handgun. Exactly. Like they did the killing. Right. Exactly. Okay. They told. And you. then it backfired on me when <laughs> Petey, my bed was destroyed. No, because I think Petey told me that he was like kind of like oh John John stuff's getting destroyed here. Hey Eric, jump on it's his bed. Right. So he was trying to get me to like. <laughs> Like just like go to sleep and just threw me on the bed and just right. shattered, <laughs> broken in half. It was definitely the straw that broke the like, camel's back. You were, yeah. Bane, you were Bane, and Lance's bed was Batman's back. <laughs> <laughs> you, you broke it yeah, in two. I did, and that's what happened. I don't remember any of this. But anyway, but the the best part was that I'm actually having trouble. Uh, so you didn't throw up that night, or did you? He did, right? I, I really I have a hard time deciphering between you and your drunken stupor and Petey and his drunken stupor. I didn't I've never seen Petey I, I don't, They were similar. I don't throw up a lot when I, like, if I get blackout drunk, I don't really throw up a lot. I think, best, I, I think I'm just too big. The best is yeah, when you hold your our, our, our mutual friend Petey, John Peterson, which who I should would have never drink. He would not drink. He was not a drinker. He's straight, like, straight I'll edge, that basically. Stuff, man. No drinking, no drugs, nothing. That was before. I know. Well, now he has a little... Le- like, he's taking the collar, unbuttoned the top button a little bit, I think, is the easiest way to he say did. it. He did. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's, he's, Actually, he's no, a I'm drinker. Sorry. I'm sorry. He unbuttoned all of the buttons and now just has his glorious abs showing <laughs> between <laughs> his unbuttoned shirt because he's a fucking workout fitness maniac. So anyway, he's like, we're going to drink tonight. And he... He's making this swill. Of, <laughs> the swish? Yeah, he's the making swish, the swish, as they would call it, trailer park boys. Like three different beers and vodka and something. What? He pours it into a giant, like, 32 ounce theater cup. Oh, God. <laughs> and it's I chalice. can't drink the stuff. I'm just like, oh, that's terrible. I've been done. I can't. And Mark I just have Mary's. a little. Uh, his friend Peter. Uh, was not I, really drinking anything. I would like to mention that Petey also drinks like a 21-year-old girl. Right. Uh, I want vodka cranberry and... Uh, you know what I mean? Like He, he didn't want to drink drinks. anything. And then he... That night, I was there. The night he was like, the, his, let's do the it. The birthing of drunken Petey. And I remember <laughs> this moment. I won't go over the uh, whole night. I remember. But I, I will say this. there is a moment where he was sitting in his room... On the floor in the dark, yeah. and we're like, "PD, all right?" And he starts like laughing. And then he starts vomiting. 
<laughs> all over the front of the shirt, <laughs> onto the floor. He's like, <laughs> I think he tried to go to the bathroom and fell into the tub. <laughs> I've never seen him drunk before. I've never so seen. I've never seen I've, anybody that drunk. I've been out to bars life. with him, you know, or like had a drink or two with him, but never like wasted PD, which I think is an amazing experience, according to Lance. I think. Well, I think that was his. His uh, that was the first time he got super drunk. Well, yeah. Everyone does that, though. Everyone exactly. Goes, everyone goes. Way I've done too that. Far. I lost my glasses. I, I will say the first in the night, grass. The night I, broke I could it. not see, and I put, I put that pen in the grass near where I thought I lost my glasses. I remember this, and I, I knew I would them. get them the next day, yeah. <laughs> and I had to help. I would find I, them. I would remember. And amazingly, they were like two feet away yeah, from the pen. I remember you talking about like, <laughs> I combed that grass for at least half an hour. <laughs> I combed it and I lost all A whole... regular Velma from Scooby Doo, you were. Yeah. My glasses. Uh, but seriously. <laughs> Way to go, though, with the pen in the ground. Yeah. Like putting your stake down. Not only do I carry a pen with me at all times, <laughs> I do. <laughs> but I, I use that as a. Yeah, I want to talk about this for a, a second. A, a marker. This made me a think beacon. Something. What was your first <laughs> drunken experience? Mm-hmm. Your first time you were drunk. I've got mine. I can start with mine. Okay, so I was a little bit of a late bloomer in my freshman year of college. I had, I lived with two roommates that were on the basketball team that drank all of the time and partied and played basketball on the Edgewood College team, and I never did any of that shit. I was just, like, a nerd, and I played my video games, and I hung out, and it was lame. And then it was May, almost gra- almost the end of the school year, and they were like, guys, you drunk, you got to come out for Cinco de Mayo. And so... They had, like, this basketball player's house. So it was, like, as closest to a frat you can get at Edgewood that doesn't have any Greek school stuff. And uh, so I show up at this party, and I get a house cup because I am first-time drinker. Because, I mean, I've never really gotten drunk in the United States. Uh, when I was in high school, there was France trip. But anyway, so in the United States, I get drunk, and, like... I got the house cup, and they just are filling it constantly. And these guys are like, oh, yeah, first time drinking, yeah, you know, like, get wasted. And I remember this house party. Terrible. It was so packed. They're telling you it was Dustin's w- place. You couldn't even walk. No, it was a different place. You couldn't even walk. Oh, you said it was packed with people, not yeah. filth. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. Um, and United 93 was not playing on the television. But anyway. Hey, guys, there's some great reviews on this. <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck it. God. Fire up a little United 93. Uh, yeah! Oh, oh, that day! Oh, that day! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, so many lives lost. Why are we doing this? We, okay, that's the United 93. That's this expression that we came up what with. What a terrible was, thing. <laughs> basically, we, uh, what is it? Uh, when, when somebody is a huge downer that brings down the mood, we say, you just United 93 this right. party. Because that's what happened. It was, a live, it was a living, beating party, and it was killed. Killed the second that movie was played. Yeah, it was a really Jesus. interesting, really interesting experience because a lot of things happened to me. What that else night. could you watch other than like I don't even know what else you could watch that would kill party that um, badly. Schindler's List. Schindler's <laughs> List. That. That's like even fucking... got funny parts. No, but at it's least. three and a half hours long. Not saying that it's like funny movie, but like English there's tape. things characters do that you. Yeah, mine. <laughs> They are mine! <laughs> English patient. Boom. That would ruin it because it's boring and three hours long. No, but so I'm at But this United three, 93 had that, like. Yeah. The subject matter that was. I yeah. Don't know. So I'm at this party. Mixed with the. And it's crazy. And there are people getting wasted. And, like, uh, so. <laughs> there was. <laughs> okay. So there's this other part of this story too. Uh, so there was this uh, girl that was in my uh, uh, my East Asian Studies course that I went to high school with. I won't mention her name. What's that mean, East Asian? Uh, it's, it's East Japan. Japan, Japan you, China. You, you were the worst kind of nerd. <laughs> well, whatever. I had to take a history course, and so mostly Japan, a little bit of China. It was or? Japan and China. J- Japan and China history. It was interesting. Uh, through the like, because it was all about samurai and shit. It was kick ass. But anyway. And also sure. about World War Two and how terrible things went for Japan. Him but anyway, <laughs> uh, but anyway, we talked about yeah the rape of Nanking. We we, uh, the, uh, we had a Chinese professor, so he was very 
very adamant about that situation. <laughs> if you haven't looked it up, look it up. Uh, actually, don't look it up. Don't look it up. Look it up it's on a day it's gonna that you're already de- through you. <laughs> 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 look it up on a day that you're already depressed, and then you will be like, "Oh, okay, this. I want to kill myself or now." <laughs> or you're reading a bunch of horrible cracked articles, and you're like, "Just top it off." No, but <laughs> just just finish just make it. this the worst experience right. of my life. But there was this there was this girl in this class that I went to high school with, and she was. Very attractive. One of the most attractive people I've probably ever known. And Chinese. And not Chinese. Oh. Don't be <laughs> I think you know who I'm talking about. Okay. She she was a JJO girl. She worked at Hooters for a while. Anyway, very hot lady. And we did homework together and stuff. But she had she had like my phone number and I had her phone number. And earlier in that night, she was like, oh, I'm going to be at this party too. So we met at the party, whatever. And then the cops come. And everyone's like, cops are here! And I'm like, this is the first time I've ever been drinking! And it, we, everyone just it fucking... It was like, basically, like, when you open up, like, a rock that's like has earth underneath it, and you see all of the insects just scattered. <laughs> it was that house. It was just like, holy shit, everyone's, like, you know, just racing out of the doors. Dude, I run out into the backyard, and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? Because the guy was just like... And they were pretty cool about it, because obviously this happens all the time. The guy who was out front was just like, all right, anyone that's not 21, leave out the back, just head towards State Street. And so I run out the back, and everyone's just panicking. All these people I've never seen before. Dude's jumping a fence. Like, everyone's racing. I look and look at the front, and there's these cops talking to these two girls that are, like, I know, that are, like, fucking 18. And I'm like, oh, my God, they're being caught by the cops. And I, like, race off, and I make it to State Street. On my own. I'm like, where am I? I am wasted. I have not drunk before ever. And like, I, I just go, like, walking around on State Street. I go to Ian's Pizza because I don't know what's going on. And I'm hungry because I'm drunk. And you get super hungry when you're drunk for right. some reason. And I order two slices. One slice too many, I might add later in the story. <laughs> Anybody who's ever ordered two slices of Ian's pizza. But I was starving. I was, I was like, one, one slice many. isn't going to do it. So I get my two slices. I go out, sit on the curb, eat my slices, drunken, alone, in downtown Madison. Never been drunk before. And I get, like, some fucking RA pulls up in their car and is like, hey, you need a ride back to Edgewood? I'm like, hell yeah. And I jump in. Get a ride back. All the other, like, guys that were at the party, like, had, like, filtered back and walked back. And we were all, like, talking about, oh, my God, the cops get there. And I'm, like, having fun time. I've never been at a party that got busted by cops. Yeah. I had never been either. (laughs) And so I had been, so I had been, like, sitting there and I was, like, I'm going to play some video games drunk and it'll be hilarious. I played Doom 3 drunk. And it's amazing. Because <laughs> it's just like, I can't shoot anything. And like things are jumping out of closets. And I'm like, flashlight. Like, laughing. Go. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm having a great time. And it's like terrible. And then like, I like suddenly like, I'm like, I'm just going to go. I'm going to pass out. So I pass out in my bed. And then like, I get, <laughs> and then at like four in the morning, I wake up. And you know what happens after you've been drinking. I didn't know this at this point. When you wake up out of for no reason at four in the morning after drinking, you know what happens, right? You run to the bathroom and you vomit like crazy <laughs> because you woke up because you had to throw up and you are woken from your slumber and I like barely made it to the bathroom. We've done that maybe a couple times actually. But I made it. Usually if I'm gonna throw up it's gonna be earlier in the evening. But I made it to the bathroom. There's a little throw up on the floor, but that was easy to clean up in the bathroom, but I made it to the toilet. It was all good. I, I, I'm like, oh, this is terrible. And I pass out, and I, like, wake up the next morning, and I see my phone, I have a message. Uh-oh. Voicemail. Dun, dun, dun. That I had missed from the night before. Um, apparently, after the party, the voicemail's like, hey, John, I was just wondering if you wanted to hang out in my dorm. <laughs> it's this little girl from before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> calling me at, like, 2 in the morning after this party got busted. <laughs> Come hang out in her dorm. And she had recently broken up with her boyfriend. She had told Booty me about. Call. And I was like, probably not. <laughs> Two a.m. Though. I don't know if he could have pulled the trigger at that time. Uh, oh, personally, the state I was in, probably not. <laughs> but at not least I would have had. You were still like, how old were you? Eighteen. But no, I was a bit of no, a. I was a bit no, of a no, greenhorn. No, no, no. Maybe forget about the. <laughs> I'm just saying. Missed. I'm just saying. We'll never know. You two would have talked. Because 
Because Would have been a nice talk. It could have been a nice chat about feelings. It could have been, but unless she just threw herself on you. But seriously, two in the morning, kind of difficult. But anyway, yeah, yeah uh, it, it didn't work out, and I was just like, that was one of the great situations. Where the fact like, that you didn't answer though could have also worked in your favor. It, you know, I could have ended up with some sort of. Did it uh, not? It did not disease. work in your favor. Oh, I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> now, what <laughs> happened after that? How were the relations? Oh, nothing. No problem. No problem? Or what, what happened? Nothing. Just never talked? She never we, called you? No, we just kind of just were in class. I mean, it was the, almost the end of the... It was May. It was almost the end of the year. Oh, So okay. it was kind of just like... I had the class probably had two classes left in the final. So, like, we didn't see each other that much after yeah. that. So it was just like, whatever. You know what I mean? So it was just kind of like one of those situations where I think it was just a random chance and i was wasted and passed out so yeah. didn't even get a chance i i'm almost positive you had a better night by yourself than you would have with her uh, eh, <laughs> you know i might learn some things though but anyway yeah that was my first it. drunken story and it, it was crazy crazy night <laughs> busted by cops alone on state street drunk throwing up pizza pretty much everything you want on your first night getting wasted <laughs> yeah. And I uh, experienced it all, and then never drank for like another year and a half because I was an RA the next year and we couldn't drink, except for the end of the year when we didn't care anymore. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just like fuck it. Let's well, do a Power Hour and listen to Dave Matthews Band Power Hour CD that someone made because that's what was popular when I was in college. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that was a really long story. If anyone has another drunk story they would like to say, I thought I'd give you enough time. I don't know. I think we already went over Eric's. Well, bottom six I guess, life. I guess, what was the like, first time, though? Real quick, like the first time. Not going to go out like how it happened, but it was in high school. I, I want to mention before, high you get in, before you get into this. Yeah. Was this your senior I year? I ran into our mutual friend Gus a couple <laughs> years ago uh, drinking downtown. Uh, and Madison? Yeah. All right. I think it was New Year's Day or something, Ooh. like two years ago. Ring in the New Year. And, uh, and your name came up, interestingly enough. Mm-hmm. And Gus says, Eric's a fucking pussy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, he's just, he's just like, okay, we're smoking a bowl. And he's just like, <laughs> he's just like, I can't be in the room. I'm going to go to the room. I'm going to get out of the room. <laughs> he was doing this whole impression. And it was funny. Uh, and Because at that time, I was still smoking weed, too. But. That is... <laughs> I don't really do it anymore. Oh, it was our, funny. Our parents taught us well. Well, I just I just I can't enjoy in, it anymore myself. But when you grew up in the row household, <laughs> you were taught. It's, it's just funny. Could be in the room, Eric. Come on. Yeah, you wit- you wigged out. <laughs> you wigged out. Eric man. wigged out. I did. Lost a lot of respect. <laughs> Lost a lot. <laughs> Gus basically yes. thinks you're a pussy now. And I don't know about you, but I think Gus is one of the coolest guys I know. Peer <laughs> pressure. It's you like the Fonzie it. telling you you aren't God. shit. I don't want to say this. <laughs> I got to say, like, I don't want to say this is an anti-after school special, but basically the fact that you didn't succumb to peer pressure makes you look like a pussy. I'm just saying that you should have succumbed gotta, to peer I pressure. I got to say. I mean, Gu- Gus I is, say. Th- he's, he is the Fonzie, though. Gotta say, Gus is. He is a kick-ass dude. Gus can peer pressure me into just about anything. Yeah. <laughs> which is how... Including I, which is hyperventilating how he... and leaving his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Weed. This is the real shit, man. I gotta get out of here. Oh, oh. The cops are gonna be on me. I saw that Rick James episode of Chappelle show. It's, it's all that ill. <laughs> Flashing before your eyes. <laughs> the pill addiction you're going to have as you smoke this one bowl. <laughs> Oh, yes. But anyway. That's funny. God. That's the way we were taught, though, in school, man. It was like, you touch, you you get a whiff of that weed, and you will be an addict. <laughs> that was, like, what we taught. like And, like, the abstinence stuff that we were taught. Like, if you put your dick anywhere near a lady, she'll be pregnant. That's it, man. Right. We're going to have a kid. So you just don't have sex. <laughs> this is like, oh, this look is, at that penis. Really? <laughs> and they're like, wait, 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 wait. Aren't there like condoms or something? They're like, no, no, man. Take a break. It's like, this what is this? this? Fucking like bodybuilders. Fucking like, yeah. yeah I mean, like, we are virgins <laughs> lifting weights. Remember, like, we had like a motivational speaker. I remember a teacher that likening the use of condoms stopping a flow. And she's like, she's like, it's like throwing golf ball through volleyball net, boys. 
<laughs> I'm just like, I'm just imagining like, like you get you get down, you get hot and heavy. You, it might slip off. You don't know where it's gonna go. <laughs> it's, it's like she didn't say that second part. No, I know, but it wouldn't have been out of the realm of. Uh, possibility. But I mean, like, I just look back at that, like the abstinence-only like sex ed that we had. It was just like crazy. It was just like thinking about like that stuff, and then like. Like, it was just like, why couldn't they just been like, why? Condoms? Like, Here's my policy. So many Darlington under Here's my policy. My policy wouldn't exist if this was taught. Here's my sex ed class. Yeah. Okay, uh, guys, girls. So, uh, well, I was just talking mostly to the guys here. A lot of you are going to try to get laid. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of you girls. Don't sweat the whole abstinence fear thing because you're not going to get a chance to lay with a woman. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> no, but you should... A select few will. Yeah. Some of them will be trailer trash. But some of them. And they will have babies. Yes. <laughs> But some the other legends. half will be jocks that get off scot free because everything they do is fantastic. You are in the middle. <laughs> you won't get anything. So touch some boobies. You might I don't get know. a hand down your pants at some You're point. You're borrowing your mom's car. What do you expect? It's pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. So yeah, why are you scared everybody with abstinence when people just aren't even capable of getting yeah. the sex? Yeah. It's not going to happen for most of you. Also, ladies, I just want to talk to you for a second. Don't. Just don't. There's, it's, there's, there's these no guys ladies, here. There's no ladies listening to These this. guys here. <laughs> don't. Don't ever well, have sex with any of them. They're terrible. It's a terrible uh, situation for the lady because you're never going to get good sex in high school. No. Unless you've been like together for a long time. But then it's just weird symbiotic relationships that are never good. It turns into the venom thing. Yeah, yeah, the black suit. What? <laughs> one of them's the Venom monster. More, one of them's more. Spider Man. Right? <laughs> I've, I've seen it a thousand times. times. There's always one relationship in each class Man. that is like the together forever thing that just is, uh, yeah. it's gone too far. It just needs to stop. <laughs> and then you get a tattoo on your stomach, and it's really kind of weird. And don't go with the older no, guys. You know don't go with the older guys I know seeking. You're talking, yeah. seeking <laughs> right. You go with the older guys seeking the better sex. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And what you get is a bunch of hassles, probably. Whoa, first a off. A guy who's probably really lame, but he doesn't seem lame because he's 20. Oh, first he's off. he's 22. I'm going to stop you alcohol. I'm gonna stop <laughs> for a second, though. Because there's always the guy who's like a junior in like college or sophomore college dating like a girl from high school. Right. Why? You're not getting anything from there. College girls is where it's at, man. You don't date a high schooler. Because they're going to talk about homecoming, and you're going to want to shoot yourself in the <laughs> fucking head. Why? And you can't do anything either. Well, I hate to say the pot's calling the kettle black here. Hey! But we were both in college. <laughs> there may be a four-year one difference. One was like, yeah. There may be a four-year age difference. <laughs> but we were both in college. <laughs> you thought she I'd was... miss that. You thought I drank too much of the 40. <laughs> it just slipped by. She was a freshman. I was a senior, all right? One was 19. One was 22. Well, one was 18. Well, whatever. T- 18? It's 19. Took forever. Legal! In all and 50 then, states. When you guys go out to bars, you never invite me. It's like I'm not even there. That's like, oh, we don't want to dance around. We want the elect- intellectuals tonight. Uh, what? You're intellectual enough. You know about Batman. I just know about you drinking at the plaza without me. Well, that was <laughs> Lauren's friend. What did this turn into? <laughs> all right, fine. I know you haven't been drinking with me. I know all about everything. <laughs> <laughs> 40 talk. No, it's fine. Oh, uh, yes. But uh, I think this is part of a larger issue, which whoa. is John, I think, keeps two separate groups of friends. This is true. He doesn't even deny it. <laughs> well, why would I deny it? I don't want you guys to see. He does. <laughs> Who are these people? Because if these other people, I have almost three sets of friends now. Because I have work friends Holy now. They're shit. starting to become more friendly, and it's just like, oh boy. See, I have work Inception. friends, but they don't want to hang out with me after I know, work. I, mean, I have to kick up. The, <laughs> kick up the, <laughs> I'm gonna kick up the friend layer to my other layer of friends. Some of these people don't even have cars. I give them rides. They don't want to hang out. <laughs> I like you just give him a ride and you're like, hey man, what are you doing right now? Oh, I'm just gonna go right. into my apartment 
And I don't know. I'm probably going to I gotta bed. go. I'm go to bed busy. right away. <laughs> and I got stuff to do. I get out of here. I, do, I got a lot of laundry I got to do. <laughs> I mean, you got three sets of friends. Yeah. So there's, so there's the work friends. The work friends. There's they come. You guys. And then there's Lauren's friends that I have to be friends with that I'm almost friends with a couple of that are from like Edgewood. So I kind of got three groups. Obviously, you're I tried the tightest to mix, with us. I tried to mix them. Yes, obviously. Cause we're actually, we're the bros. Yes, the broskies. The literal bro, and then other bro. Right. Um, but like... Uh, <laughs> and Adam, who can't clean up after himself. He's, he's, <laughs> <laughs> him, him and I go way back, though. Like, there was times in, like, high school when we would just, like, hang out all summer. Talk about Romance of Three Kingdoms. Uh, like, yeah, you know, play some of, uh, Final Fantasy X. <laughs> play some... Uh, uh, some Dragon Ball Z Super Budokai 3. Uh, <laughs> so this is the worst. This is the worst. I will tell you this, though, and Adam will deny it. But fuck you. I can use the turbo button if my controller has it. All right? <laughs> I don't care. It makes me win every battle. <laughs> but fuck you, Adam. Anyway, he won't listen to this. And there's the work friends. And, you know, I'm less friendly with them, but I have drank with them a couple times and hung out with them a bit, a little bit. So there's a little extraness, Eric. Cause some mischief. Throwing shit on the floor. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah. So you know, triple triple friends. And then there's the Warren friends. Yeah. Now, what would be? Uh, how often? This is an Inquisition right now. <laughs> all right. So so obviously, like the Lauren friends, they're all younger than you. Mm, yes. <laughs> and so what goes on? You guys are just chilling. Is anybody you all you all dancing on the dance floor or? I don't know. You go go out and party with these people? Or no. What do you? No. no. I go to parties. You have, like dinners. With I go them? to parties at Matt's apartment with them. And you've been to Matt's apartment? No. Oh. It's a den of despair. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't. I know Matt listens to every single one of the episodes of these, but his apartment is just so full of stuff. It's hard to move around in there because he's got all his music stuff. His Here's my has thing. I show up after I get off work at ten thirty. Every time, I feel like it's out of control once I arrive. Well, yeah. I feel like things have gotten okay. out of control. Just because, and I'm, for me, the party's beginning. Just because, Lance, the last time you came to a party, Matt fell through a poker table. He did. Uh, and his brother was passed out on the floor next to him. And ordered three... It was that guy that looked like Crispin Glover? Yes. <laughs> he ordered... He had everything at that party. He ordered three Ian's pizzas for like $90... On his credit card, and then passed out and ate none of the pizza. Right. And we all ate it, uh, and yeah, that was an amazing party. And it was fun, though. It was crazy. You, it was it was kicking off when I got there, and I got there at like nine. You know what I mean? Jesus yeah, Christ! It was an early spiral start. out of control. <laughs> yeah, you know, but whatever. But you don't you don't you don't get crazy with uh, the other two groups of friends. Work friends? Nah, no, no, nah, not really. Not as much as with you guys. Nobody else have I stayed up till 7 in the morning watching old WrestleManias with. All right? Yeah. You've got that forever. Something special. Did you just finish your 40? Just about. Eric's got it done, too. I have about uh, three I drank a real 40. You guys have whatever you have. I drank a high life. Uh, I'm sorry. Bud Light? Yeah. Light? 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 This high is life. high life. High. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Elite. Mr. Yeah. I'll... Oh, wait. High life? Is that... I think if we talk to Gus, you're not spending a lot of time with the high life. <laughs> Are you? That's what I want. I want to have Gus on this show. Oh, my God. Have him hash it out with Eric. Yeah, it's so, Eric and Gus. <laughs> the, uh, Straight up. The uh, first time I got... It could got, turn ugly. The first could time, turn ugly. The first time I got really drunk was... was yeah. Involves Gus. Because okay. he gave me a ride back. Because he's he drives himself home. He's hardcore. He drives himself. <laughs> oh my god! So I loses story. his wallet almost every time he drinks. Yeah. Yeah. I've helped him try to find his wallet. I've I've taken Do it to bars. Reminds me of I don't. You remember this? We used to hang out with this guy, Booma. Though, remember Booma? Oh, he's way cooler than Booma. I know, though. but Booma was kind of the same way, where he'll just get drunk and lose his wallet and kind of lose faculties. Oh. And where you know what I mean? You know, you were there. Remember yeah. when he fought you? Oh, right. Yes. Anyway. Fights. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it, was a, it was a bit. He threw something on his face while he was I was on the mixing ground. drinks. I was in my mixing drink stage of drinking. Yeah, yeah. Still <laughs> and, mixing uh, it up. Mixologist. I was cutting some, cut some limes, cut some lemons. 
and boom, is passed out on the floor in the dining room, so I threw lemon in his face. <laughs> <laughs> and he got mad. He just like, started windmill yeah. windmill throwing punches and stuff. Yeah. Like uh, He like bolted straight upright. And it was just landed like, like hmm. zero punches. <laughs> I know, but he like went crazy animal anger. Right. Like to the point where I thought he was being joking. But then he looked like he was actually trying to punch you. Oh, was he like, was. He was. And it was like, what is happening? I, he was. He's one of those. He's one of those guys. It's not tough. That <laughs> All right, throws punches. Because you're the toughest. I don't throw punches. Three point stance. Well, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't throw a punch at you. That's true. That's true. I have never thrown a punch at anybody in my life except my brother. Well, we boxed. But that's brother. <laughs> and he made my ears spring when he hit me in the face all the time. <laughs> but that's besides the point. Well, that you got a punch in the back, you know? Right. No, I don't punch people. It's ridiculous. And I don't throw ridiculous windmill punches either. <laughs> like a crazy Looney Tunes car. Or his other friend, Hudak. Oh, my God. Who tried to beat me up in his car. I remember this story. Man, that guy, huh? That guy. That guy. So for someone, okay, I want to say, say this is, about Hudak. I want to say first, for someone who drinks so much, he is terrible at it. He is the worst. Like he's really bad at drinking, yeah. but he does it all the time. Anyway, sorry. Maybe that's a symptom of something. Anyway, maybe he's deeply sad inside. <laughs> oh, anyway, Lance, uh, what were we gonna say? <laughs> Fun talk. <laughs> well, okay, Ronald. Reagan. He tried to fight me. That's all I have to say to that. <laughs> yeah, you guys were like driving. See, he fought like the same way Puma, which was <laughs> just throw a bunch of crazy punches and you're sh- were, shit. Were you guys gonna you're go shit drunk? Were okay? you guys like gonna go to the street? You're not gonna. Fight? You're not gonna be like Jean Claude Van Damme in Bloodsport when you're fucking that drunk. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You don't get more muscles the more you drink. Yeah. So weren't you, weren't you gonna go? Weren't you guys like driving after the strip club and then you couldn't find it? Something like the that. And then I remember leaving. I was like, it's fucking close anyway. And then we got like we got into the fight and then <laughs> he tried to fight me and we he passed out on a exit ramp to the belt line <laughs> which is a giant highway road thing that goes through all of Madison. Yes. And this uh, was very safe driving. And he didn't get a DUI amazingly, even though he fell he asleep. He got pulled over by like a cop came up and knocked on his door. Like, oh, this guy's asleep. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be true, to be fair though, that's pretty. Drive on, no. That's pretty. That's pretty. No, what happened was that's pretty nice of Milton cops, by the way, because he had parked his car on like the curb next to the on ramp and was sleeping in it, and the cops were. No, like, what happened was the guy showed up. Yeah, saw who that passed out. This guy doesn't look like any fun. <laughs> I'm just gonna let him go. I don't want to deal with him for an hour. You know? <laughs> I don't want to talk to this guy's guy. got an anger that's, in his eyes right now. <laughs> it looks like, it looks like he just <laughs> fought with a friend it's and a made darkness. his friend walk home like a mile and a half. Exactly. No, but <laughs> there's a darkness in no, his but, car. But the guy totally just was like, "Hey, Hudex," he's like, "Can you drive?" He's like, "I'm not good to drive. That's why I parked." And like, they were like, "All right." We'll give you a lift home. The cop drove him home. No. Crazy that that happened. I gave Hudak a ride back to his car later the next day. But, like, that's crazy. Because, I mean, a cop could easily have just been, like, DUI. Boom. But I guess not, though. Because if the key wasn't in the ignition, you can't really say that he'd been driving. Yeah, there's like, a, there's, like, a 12-foot rule or something. Well, I think the thing... The one, keys are found within a radius of I guess. It's, it's just something like that, like... Because you couldn't really prove it in court that he had drunk drove because he was just in a car drunk without the key in the ignition. Yeah. You just say he parked there and passed out in it because it was just kind of on a side street next he to He got away with it. He got away with yeah, it. That's what we're getting at. The key is, if you're drunk, don't drive home. Just sleep in your car. <laughs> that simple. And then wake up the next that day. That man opened that door and he never saw something so sad. <laughs> he was just like, you know what? I don't need to give this guy a DUI. Oh, it looks like classic do I coming up. Gets out. Oh, patrol, I'm over here by the belt. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, here. oh, oh. Oh, my. All are, right. you, are you okay emotionally? <laughs> <laughs> you, look, you, you look like you've been crying. <laughs> I'm sorry, who I, I don't think you listen to We're that. fucking around with him, obviously. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah. Fun We're guy. adding an embellishment. Fun of, guy to hang out with. Bad at drinker, because he gets too drunk. He doesn't know when to stop. I would call him Dark Hudak. 
When he, yeah, yeah, when he gets to that point, he becomes dark. Who turns into like, like a doppelganger of himself that just stares at things. And he basically has gets a, angry <laughs> stares. He basically has like a goatee. <laughs> he, he has he's a, evil Hudak. He has a switch where once, like the second that that one beer past that moment just flips on. Right. I think everybody knows a guy like that. Oh, 40s, John's finished his forty. How much time we got? All the forties are gone. <laughs> what? That last sip. Was <laughs> mm, so good, lukewarm. Everyone knows highlight. the last sip of a forty. Which, how much time we got here? Or do we have uh, uh, as much time as we want? Let's we take a break. As long as we want, we could go another ten to twenty minutes, all right, let's or take even a, break. a half hour. Take a break. Uh, all right, we're gonna take a break and we'll be I right need back. Some beer. I need. Oh my god, I'm doing an intro. <laughs> Alright, we're back from our unprecedented third break in an episode that has just been... It's third, because we had the technical difficulties break earlier, and that did not uh, go over too well. But uh, uh, where we last left ourselves was Dark Hudak and uh, right. Drunken Friends. So we're let's, ready to move on. Yeah, let's change the subject. So, um... Eric's um, waving me along like he knows something about podcasting. Yeah, Eric, stop waving. You uh, always said okay, so almost nothing about... to offer. To... Okay. All right, but we could talk about this. Because... I guess you give us a little something. Yeah, little something, Eric's little been something. adding a lot a today. Something. All right, he's filling in the Adam void. Yeah, you know, well, might be better actually, than Adam. But he actually does talk more than Adam. As we said when Eric was on last time, he is above Adam in the hierarchy already and by virtue what? of him being. I appreciate it. I have a question for you. <laughs> do you have a receding hairline? I feel like your hair. Looks Absolutely, like... I do. It looks like you do. Hair. Fucking school, roll back, school. Roll history. the front back, Pat No, Riley no, I'm not. Style. I'm not gonna roll I my hair see back because I look like a rapist if I do. No, that. Do, roll, it. do it. Do pull it. Pull back. Do it. Oh, no, that's cool though. No, I have the I have no, the exact no. same. Wood. I have the John McClane. Check this no. out. Check this out. Same widow's peak. Oh, yeah. No. I have Dracula hair. No, no. I if, do this. If I slick my hair back, I look terrifying. Like yeah, he, you honestly look like someone who murdered like four men or four like young women. Hey, it's not. I can't shave my head either because, like, I'm like six foot seven. Yeah, you look like I, I look like a goddamn convict if I. You do look like a goon. I do. <laughs> if you shave that head, yeah, he's done it. Even if you go bald, Eric does it all the I time. I would recommend the shaved head look. That's how Eric cuts his hair. There is shaves. dignity to be had with the sides of hair. Yeah, there's <laughs> people that have just the sides. Lance, look stop right. covering for yourself in the future. Just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying Hulk Hogan still looks good. That's true. <laughs> that hot dog skin. <laughs> I'd rather be Hulk Hogan than Jay Glazer. Okay. Any, any day. Any you see that like, workout guy that's yeah, like buffing his hair the... all the time. He's perfectly I'm a firefighter, bald. guys. I got my head bald. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because you're fucking bald. It's okay. Like five, that's why you have no hair. He's 5'10 and tries to look like he's tough. <laughs> I you appreciate the short... news he gives me in the NFL. I do, but <laughs> the rest of it is a bit like subway yeah. commercials. Really, yeah. <laughs> Tom Cruise is short too, and he's pretty kick-ass. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, I'm sure he is. He's also a crazy person. <laughs> Celebrities with hair plugs. We could go into that. No. Know. Well, we could go into Matthew McCon Mahonic Mahogany. Matthew Mahogany. No. All right. McConaughey. Yes. And Jeremy Piven, hair plug kings. Oh, really? I didn't know Matthew McConaughey. I knew Jeremy Piven. Oh, yeah. McCon Jeremy Piven. Oh, Brendan looks... Fraser was also bald. Really? It's all fake. Jeremy Piven looks like... It's a picture of him with, like, no hair. Really? <laughs> and he looks so horrible. <laughs> I, I, I think he's taking the trash out. Yeah. So he's probably, like, grimacing already. <laughs> it's like a daily chore. Already at your worst time. Yeah, it's like, right. let's snap it's photos early. of these celebs taking out, the, cleaning the garbage disposal. Brendan Fraser, he's taking the trash out. Yeah. He's, he realizes he just missed the jar garbage truck. Then they take the picture of him with no hair. <laughs> That's what I think I was looking at, you know? <laughs> Like, oh, we've the truck is gone. Snap. <laughs> we've switched Brendan Fraser's hot cup of Folgers with a cup of, of hot mud. <laughs> Take a photo. <laughs> That's what happened. What about that other Hollywood? Uh, we got we got Twilight drama. 
Oh god, Krista Stewart, cheat daughter. She has slept with the director no, of the movie. No, allegedly, she'd made out with on camera. I heard there was an abandoned house against the window, oh. and there's sucking face. Oh jeez. Pictures were taken. Lives were ruined. <laughs> G- uh, uh, Lives were not. What's ruined. a guy? Her one life. The dir- uh, what's the, his name? No, the director. The guy family. who plays the main vampire in Twilight. <sighs> he he is like. Oh, he doesn't even, he doesn't even release a comment. All right. She says she's sorry for the whole world. <laughs> All right, Robert, Robert Pattinson, I just want to stop. We're going to stop here. Robert no, Pattinson. what happened was the news broke before he found out. And then he was the guy. How is that the worst thing ever? Like, if you're a normal human being and you hear about your girlfriend cheating on you through friends, that's bad. But, like, if you're, like, a star like he is and you open up the fucking, like, paper and it's like... <laughs> Pictures of your girlfriend making out with this fifty-year-old director guy, I, and just being like, "My life is a shambles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm British." <laughs> is but he? He's British. I don't know. He was in the Harry Potter movies, so he's pale. He's British. But anyway, <laughs> put it past him. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past Cedric Diggory. But anyway, I would say this. I already moved his stuff out today. I just want to say this, Robert Pattinson. You could get. Any fucking tale he wants, though. Like, he is attractive and, like, 25. I don't know, I don't know if he could get Charlie Sheen dude, tail. Oh, he could. He has money. He could dude, get any of Charlie dude. Sheen's tail. Because Charlie Sheen's tail is the tail that he paid $20,000 to sleep with it for a week. It's more fun. That's <laughs> just going to, like, read poetry and be pale. Yeah, but you have less <laughs> chance of being, like, beaten, though. The chicks love that. <laughs> Demi Moore will swoop in. Yeah, there you go. Like, I need another 20-year-old to stay young. <laughs> yeah, she's basically a vampire, is what we figured out. And, and now we're going to see uh, all this generation of movies, uh, these franchises with five or eight sequels, like the Harry Potters and the Twilights. Yeah. We see all their careers come crashing down now but that here, the franchises are over. But here's the thing with Chris and Stewart. Daniel Radcliffe. Done. I heard that. Uh, You're not gonna see him in anything for a while. Not till he's, he's thirty. And and because she sleeps with her director, you're like, oh, he Kristen was Stewart has a promising career because she sleeps <laughs> with the director. No, I heard she's in this uh, movie that was at Sundance. She's one of the few people in in uh, Twilight that's gotten work outside of Twilight, right? Yeah, yeah. But she's she was in the, in the Snow White and the Huntsman. She's apparently in this movie uh, that's uh, from like. Uh, like this uh, Jack Kerouac and all those guys. That on the road? Did they do yeah. a movie of that? Yeah, and she's in it as like one of the people in it. And she supposedly is like good in it and topless. So look forward to that. That was one but of those boom. books where they tell everyone who wants to be a journalist, you have to read On the Road with Jack Kerouac. And my brother read it. He bought it. <laughs> he read it. And my brother, I don't know if you, you guys don't know him, I don't think. He's like the coolest person that's ever lived. He okay. is. I, okay, I, for me anyway. He lives in Arizona. He does. That That's immediately a red flag that he moved to Tempe. <laughs> but anyway. No, no, no. That's awesome. No, it's so not. Cool. He made it awesome. <laughs> no, he made it cool. It's like uh, Don Draper. It's like, you're looking at this the wrong way. You don't say, it's lame. He made what was lame cool because right? he went there. <laughs> now, you got to turn it around like that. Right? Okay. okay. And, uh, and he read it. He's like, Mostly it's a bunch of crap, and it's boring. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I don't want you to read that. And then he's giving me all these cool biker and prison books. He's <laughs> reading those. <laughs> this is real, man. <laughs> Not guys out on their LSD. And he doesn't trip. explain a lot when he talks to my brother. He's just like, you should read this, because it's cool. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. I, and then I read it, and I'm like, man, Fort Lev- Leavenworth. That's a crazy place in the 80s. <laughs> he's like... Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I got a couple other books like that. I can <laughs> show you some stuff. These prison saga books. Man, I would like to say that you read the weirdest shit I've ever heard of. Like, I remember you were like, oh yeah, I'm reading all these books about all these serial killers. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, I got four books about serial killers I'm reading. I just had the one book with all of the serial killers. <laughs> you have the serial killer compendium. Right. Like, oh, this guy... In Chicago in the 1800s, boarded up his house and made a murder house. <laughs> it's crazy. It, it was like, crazy. It was crazy. I also read the book because yeah. it was interesting, but that was crazy, man. Like there was, uh, there was photos and stuff in there. Yeah, it was a photo book. It was a glossy, glossy pages. It was like your, it was like uh, one of those. It was like one of those. 
It was it was the facts. It was it, just the facts with a horrible cover. Yes, it was Dan Aykroyd. The cover of Dragnet. Yeah, just exactly. the facts. <laughs> but it was pretty cool. Some though. of it was too factual. <laughs> yeah, there was there's some facts <laughs> I could have lived without knowing uh, in those some books. Things that have haunted me <laughs> well, to this day. I don't look at the doorknob the same. No, I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, but I did have another topic we could talk about. What do we got? Worst job ever. I think Eric had a really interesting uh, thing. You talked about some place you had at college that you worked. Oh, yeah. And uh, when I worked in college uh, during my senior year, I was kind of College was my best job ever, too, by the way. So you obviously (laughs) got screwed over here. No, no, it was all right. But I I was working uh, in the lab, kind of like kind of managing students. Yeah. And... Oh, that's never a good thing. It was pretty bad just... I, it's one of those things where like it makes you feel old, but you feel like that you had more common sense when you were that age. But just like stuff like just the shit I had to deal with like every day was like, oh, I, I'm gonna put all these plates into this uh, like glove box where like it goes under a vacuum and the plates explode, <laughs> shattered glass. Puts in five plates, they explode. Oh, that's weird. Let's try it again. <laughs> Let's put Let's more put in, in there. Five, Let's put in four, five more of these Fucking samples. Ten Explode. <laughs> put in two more. Explode. Don't say anything about it. Right. Next day. <laughs> hey, oh, uh, yeah, there might be something wrong with the with the vacuum system. It kind of... All these plates broke. <laughs> it created uh, a vacuum which shattered all of my plates multiple times. And then we asked him, like, oh, when did this happen? How, ma- how many times did this happen? Uh... It was like three times. Jesus Christ. Why do you keep doing this? You use plastic or thick glass. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Just It was just constantly that. Yeah, I don't funny. know. It was more depressing than anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we also, you know, we were just like, let's put some marshmallows in there too. Watch them get big, you know. Uh, like, I also worked as a telemarketer, which is way yeah, worse. Yeah, I worked at the same whatever. telemarketer too. And Lance worked at a telecom company yeah. as well. I had you were going to be a manager, weren't you? You kept, tell, you kept telling me this. I tried, and I had an interview. And uh, Did you have suspenders on in the interview? They could snap. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. <laughs> Should have went American Psycho on. We're talking about a place where your job is to uh, voice comments uh, of conversations people. of people to deaf people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Use a text screen. And I felt there was nothing wrong in saying I know everything about this job. <laughs> <laughs> they took it the wrong way. <laughs> I did not get. Like, oh, this guy thinks he knows everything. I fucking do. Okay, <laughs> you yeah. know. I hot have been shot coming in here <laughs> for a year. He did the same job. You know, the same stupid job. And it was it was it. And I've read after that. You're not supposed to say you know everything. Oh, so if I blow a little smoke up your ass, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you thought it would that's like, going to make you feel better, yeah. but you'll feel like, like I don't know what what people think. Like, oh, he thinks he knows everything. Like he's one of those. What well, you're supposed to say, Lance, is I think I know a lot of stuff, and I've learned pretty much everything, and I really want to move forward. Like I want to learn more. Is what you when always I say. I was more of like, was like, it's time to do something else. Yeah, exactly. Well, you, <laughs> it's time you just said it the wrong way. To no, but uh, do you text, anything that else. Text, <laughs> That text, to, that speech to text thing is amazing because there's the opposite thing you can do, and this was ultimate. I had a prank. thing where I had a, uh, I had a, first of all, shack. I tried to talk about a shack, uh-huh. and it came up Shaquille O'Neal every time, every fucking time. Did you, did you spell <laughs> shack with a Q? No, <laughs> there's your problem. You have to type it in the other way. The, the normal way. Like, Shaq has overtaken the amount of times... People like, are talking about You're leading me to believe people have talked about Shaq more than they have about Shaqs? <laughs> <laughs> He's really, and really the, come in the public con- And I remember the other thing was uh, when people said, I can... Yeah. It came up, I can, like this guy who, who owns this company. Uh, <laughs> who's this, who is this guy? They're you talking probably, about this guy all the time. You probably know people. who he is. I found I out. Have no clue. Who this seems is. like Bob. I can. I don't know what it's. He's like a conglomerate genius dude okay. that runs some companies you probably know of. And that, I found out that later. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it was <laughs> spelt wrong horribly into one word. Yeah. It was like I H C A H A N or something. Yeah. Anyway. 
But yeah, I, I got a like a like a twenty minute sex call when this guy was rubbing one off. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! And when I finished it, and it was it was horrible. At least you don't have the other part where you have to speak the words that are being computed in. Like there was this thing. Um, uh, it's an ultimate college prank. For well, my the, I was year. just gonna say the funny thing was. Yeah. I got like five extra points. For the sex call, the kind of call it was, yeah, 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 on my scorecard, but she still didn't give me a hundred. What? She's <laughs> like, what? You weren't sexy enough, man. <laughs> Did you hear all the stuff about the lube and the windows being closed? Did you hear the details? <laughs> Tell me that would have rattled. Oh my the, god! Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got them closed. I got the windows closed. This guy was a trucker. I know he was a trucker. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Lance. <laughs> This is like Fifty Shades of Grey or trans. Driving. What is that? I keep hearing about this Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't it's know a what... book written, and it's like <clears throat> secretly about sex for girls. It's like a sexy novel. It's like that one that uh, Mr. Garrison wrote in but uh, I thought, like... South Park, where it's just like fifty thousand penises or whatever. It's just about like it's just about like one girl getting bagged a lot. Yeah, it's like a sex book. It's a romance sex book for women. So, let me housewives. tell you something about... Uh... There is an amazing Fifty Shades of Grey thing where I believe... Uh, is it Samuel L. Jackson? I was watching it? the movie. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I actually got something on, on the point of this. I was watching a movie that was recommended by an article I read that said the movie, the Lolita remake's really good. So I was going to watch it. Who's I in never... that? Jeremy is that Harrison I... Ford? Jeremy Irons. Oh, okay. Uh, I, think, and I think of Sabrina. The guy, oh, Franklin Jella. Okay, something. I think I think that was him. So uh, better than the Kubrick movie. He said it's better. Okay. And I'm reading it, or I'm watching it rather. I think I think You're it's definitely it. based on a book, though. You can tell <laughs> okay. it, over the narration of yeah, Jeremy yeah, Irons. Yeah. I'm not a pervert, but, <laughs> but I had sex I made with you a fourteen-year-old girl. A lot of perverted things with my lol. Oh. He calls her lol, which makes it creepier to me. Yeah, he's like lol. <laughs> it's just like Is he oh, laughing out loud. Oh. I don't get it. Yeah, I know, right? He didn't call. He never calls her Lolita. Nobody ever calls her that in the movie. He's like. Oh, this is creepy. <laughs> it sounds like Hank Hill is what you're saying. <laughs> oh. And so anyway, I'm watching it. Oh. It's just like, uh, you Hank know Hill's when you see a movie room. from the perspective of a main character and you're supposed to feel empathy or yeah. ride along with yeah, them yeah, on this yeah. adventure? <laughs> I'm just like, what a fucking pervert. Like, the whole time. The whole time I'm just like. What a dirty old man. Dude. Creeping me out. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's not just me being a uh, prude or something. It was just the movie is creepy as fuck. Lance. <laughs> so if you watch that remake, you, you'll know what I'm talking about about ten minutes in. When he's like, just, just, just creepy. Lance, just, it's like a movie from the point of view of a, of a predator. Child molester? A predator. Or a, <laughs> no, but seriously. Like Chris gonna, Hansen could show up at any time in that movie. I think we're going to have to call up pussy. Gus and he's going to have some words for you. He's going to call you a pussy because you didn't like this movie. <laughs> uh, no. You fucking pussy? You didn't like that with all the... Oh. You know those crazy... <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> those crazy like text-to-speech things, though. Like We had those in college. It was the ultimate college prank. Where I think it's like the opposite of what you did, where you would like type something in and then a guy would have to say it over the phone to someone. And so we used to do this in college because someone fucking found it out. This is my freshman year with all my basketball buddies that I was rooming with. But you would basically type the shit into this website and then they would call the person and leave the message that you typed, I guess, for people that can't speak. People that yeah, that's mute, the I other guess. thing. And so... Basically, we would write the most foul, disgusting things you can ever imagine. And then it would be some guy be like, Hi, I'm Patrick with a message from blah, blah, blah. I want to suck a dick. <laughs> and it's just be like, and I love you. penises. And I will, it's just like, oh my God. Like, and imagining that you type the shit in and hit send, and that some random person in the call center is going to have to read off the shit. Like, the first time I got one of those messages on my phone, I was like, what the fuck? 
was that? And they have to read it like totally stone faced. Exactly. It was insane. And I loved it because they had to because it was like a service for mute people. So they can't like not accept something because it could totally be some guy with a disability writing it because there's no way they can know. And it was amazing. <laughs> I think you can still find those online. Um, another big prank was the um, calling uh, where you could put in someone else's phone number into the thing. For like, I remember there was this Hannah Montana thing that I did to PD, which causes a huge, huge blowback on my part. <laughs> he pranked me by filling my entire apartment with uh, newspapers. But uh, yeah, uh, there's this Hannah Montana concert that was going on in, like Milwaukee or something, and you could set like reminders to call you with a pre-recorded message from Hannah Montana. And I set him up with like eight alerts for this. <laughs> where it would just be like, hey girl, it's Hannah Montana hoping you're going to make it to my concert. <laughs> and I had it set up on Petey's phone like four times to call him at two in the morning <laughs> with this. Because you could set what time it would call him and what time zone. Yeah. I, how is that legal? Like that you could put a phone number online and it's like a fucking robo phone call to someone. Because... I kind of want to do that right now to some people like Petey. Because <laughs> I'm moving out of my apartment. He can fill that up with paper all he wants. <laughs> oh my god. But anyway, uh, Lance, there's um, something we do every week that, uh, I don't know, that I think we should get into <laughs> that I am stalling while I get the audio for this uh, yeah. setup. But <laughs> What grinds your gears? All right. What I'm going to talk about now, I think it affects all of us. Oh, ooh. It affects all of us, man. Oh, my. I'm going to get serious. It's going to be that uh, Saved by the Bell, Zach Morris is talking Born to you. Born in the 80s. Moment. Serious. Lay down moment. moment. Let's do it. People who... Uh, I don't know if they call it begging for change. It's, oh, boy. They have, oh. the, they have the, the guitar. <sighs> Pavement job. And they're singing, uh, singing a tune. Poorly. I'm assuming. What are they called? What are the people who play... Uh, Troubadours? <laughs> minstrels? <laughs> minstrels. Uh, actually, I believe minstrels was a term for uh, black entertainers in the 20s. But anyway... <laughs> the, the guy who sings songs with a guitar case open. A uh, hippie? Four dollars. Dirty man. Homeless. Person who you'd never want to meet. Bard. Deaf they're not quite a beggar. The you see, alley. here's my thing. They're not beggars, but they're not entertainers either. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's my problem. <laughs> and uh, I got, I work on a, a, a street where people walk. Oh. They love it. State Street. So now I got the same guy has been performing yeah, with the quotes. Out there for like a week straight. I swear to God, one day he played guitar seven hours straight. Oh my God! Like wow, that, that's actually pretty. That's amazing. like dedication. Bruce Springsteen levels of work. Yeah. You know what I, I remember mean? when Bruce Springsteen used to be a homeless man on the street playing guitar. Yep. It was yep. a pretty epic period of his. He was career. much better. However, yeah. there's byproducts to this. Oh boy, I have become. See, only is every fucking person like this. It seems like they. Only it's like they got their good repertoire of songs, but they're like, oh, I'm tearing this song. Oh up. yeah! So they're like, I need to like, so they play a couple songs that you're like, I don't know what that is, and it's not bothering me that much. Mm-hmm. But then they're like, it's time to do it. It's learning to fly, Tom Petty, oh, right boy. now. <laughs> I'm learning to fly, and he's doing all the backup vocals by himself. Oh, but I have no wing. <laughs> I'm learning to fly. It's just like. Fucking! I didn't mind that song before. I hate it now. You ruined it. I, I think I hate Tom Petty now. <laughs> I can't stand it. And he's like, and then and he plays a new song. And you're like, okay, like I'm just doing orders. I'm walking in, walking out, and then it's like, <laughs> the times they are changing. Oh, Bob oh, Dylan, no! You're playing that. Ugh. And then he's gonna do like. And then and he's gonna go on and try to try to murder an old Rolling Stones song that I used to like. Under it, my thumb. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, stop. Uh, Guy, there are plenty of venues in this city. Yeah. If you are not worthy to play in them on a stage, <laughs> you're not really worthy to be playing on a sidewalk either. Yes. Right? Does how many bands that were great? 
worked up from the sidewalk <laughs> to the stage. How many? No. What was there? Led Zeppelin was on the sidewalk at one time? No. They got in a band. They called the guy. And they were like, oh, yeah, you guys are great. We'll put you on. You want bands at a do? fucking <laughs> venue where music is played. <laughs> not on a street corner. You know what? You know who does that? Cool bands like the Beatles when they played the impromptu concert on the roof after they were the most successful and popular band of all time. <laughs> you get your chance to do that when you're huge. You don't start on the street. And and they weren't on the sidewalk. Like, they were up there. They weren't begging for change. Yeah. They knew you fucking wanted it. Yeah. They were the Beatles. What about what about the Piccolo guy? What's your uh, what's your thoughts on the Piccolo guy? Who's the Piccolo guy? The giant man that's like four hundred pounds that plays like a flute on State Street. There's I know a, He's still around? There's a lot of music. There's a saxophone player that's no. a guy slash girl but I don't know about <laughs> He's got long hair or she's got long hair and she weighs like four hundred pounds. I see this guy. So you can't tell the difference. I see this, at this guy point. though. He's got a banjo. Oh boy. And Oh he, damn. He's, oh he's, Steve he's, Martin. He established, a, he established himself last year. Oh, boy. Last summer. He's a, he's a real was, hit on the streets. Yeah, and his two banjo songs. And neither right. of them was the theme from Deliverance. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to play that, by the way. Because, do you imagine walking down straight now he's just graduated. hearing... Yeah. I could get behind that. <laughs> he's just like, what is happening? I'm going to be molested immediately. Now he has gone beyond the sidewalks. He wants to show us how awesome he is by riding his bike while playing a banjo. <laughs> it's not even any... He's, he's, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just trying to imagine that. He's realized... It's just... I swear to God, he's making laps. It's just... It doesn't end. How do you pay that guy? Where's his change cut? He's not doing it anymore. Oh. He only did like he three does songs. For, he does it for the music. He does it for the music and to show off how he can ride, ride a bike. A bike yeah. and play. You know what? I'm waiting for him to crash that bike so badly. You know I really that? am. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to read in the paper. It's banjo Sunday. Man. Man plays banjo while riding a bike. And he gets run over by a metro bus. <laughs> <laughs> Me, uh, Colt collaborates with Metro Bus <laughs> in final composition. Oh no! That's what happens. Do you know what would make that infinitely worse? Like five hundred times worse, as if he wasn't on bike but on a unicycle doing that. Oh. That would make it the ultimate worst thing ever. Or you'd just be unicycling around playing his guitar, and you'd be like, "This is a time." Like, if you were like the president, he'd be the guy that you would order the Secret Service to. You know what? Here's I your one free death. Here's what I this want. This guy and. That, Here's what I think about all the street performers and stuff. I hate the fact that they're, like, respectful of their yeah. own space. They're spread out throughout the whole street. I think some fucking guys show up, maybe me, yeah. with, with, like, a didgeridoo, right? And just start, I don't know, do you blow into those things? What yeah, do you do yeah, with them? you blow into it. I'm, I'm going to get that big Ricola horn thing and I'm just gonna start blowing it at this fucking guy playing the Tom Petty songs you see, you see, the, you see the head down there and start saxing it up with the saxophone <laughs> right but like it's like the it's idea. not a collaboration it's a takeover <laughs> So like see, the idea that these hobos see. can like get an instrument and play it shittily it makes them slightly better than the guy that's just begging for change. Just see if you can dislike. I had two them quick more area. things we'll add on to as an appendix here. All right, appendix to be cut out. Appendix. All right, continue. <laughs> um, so the captain, the old delivery driver, I had mentioned season one. Oh, I okay. Think. <laughs> The old guy who's kind of yeah, a little nuts, kind of, kind of, kind of going downhill. This, this is not the guy who ran into multiple people, multiple kids. No, that's another guy. The captain, he's a card player. Oh, card shark. <laughs> he was playing cards. He just got out of like six months in jail. Third do I? <laughs> okay. And uh, he's worth stand up he, guy. He, they're all delivery drivers. These people, of course, but they can't hold a real. Yeah. He was he was the guy I mentioned last. He was living in his car. He, uh, that, that was him. Okay, oh. yeah, this guy. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I I hear from another friend who's in the poker games and stuff. Yeah. And he said that uh, the captain 
was playing playing cards. And and I, I don't know, playing cards in the eighties and seventies I think is different from playing cards now. <laughs> and I think this guy's having trouble. And so he lost six hundred dollars. Which is probably everything he had. Maybe even more. And so he goes out and some guy goes out he's like, Oh, I'm leaving then, whatever. <laughs> like he had a choice. <laughs> and he leaves and and uh and so anyway, some guy goes out for smoke. What the fuck are you doing, man? This guy, the captain, has slashed the tires of the guy that still that won his money in the poker oh game. Oh my god! <laughs> and he starts running down the street. This is like a fifty-eight year old man. Wow! <laughs> you don't get much more undignified than that. No. And then the other thing was uh, uh, Lando. <laughs> the other delivery driver who I've mentioned on here. Yes. He got five bucks off me because I was on a street that was nowhere near where I worked. And he just like came up to me and was like, hey, give me five bucks. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, how long now? <laughs> so I'm like, to his credit, he's always paid me back. So I'm like, he always knows how much to ask, too. Yeah, five he bucks knows ain't when no you, thing. He knows when you lend him 20, and he knows when you lend you 10, and five. <laughs> yes, five. And I'm like, all right, you've always paid me back. That was a couple months ago. I don't expect to see it again, but I might, you know, because it's long, though. Yeah. <laughs> but now I hear he's, like, begging for change and stuff. Oh, oh no. no. What? Yeah, one of my friends saw him down the street. Lance, I have a question for you. Does that make you feel good about your job, the fact that people... That work the job that you work have gone a step down to begging for change. I just want you to <laughs> these men that were once like your where, colleagues. Like where I'm gonna say it, the people that were my colleagues that lose their job are busted down to working at like a Starbucks for you people that lose their job. Are begging for money, <laughs> begging for change, and slashing tires. <laughs> oh, you need to rise above, Lance, and I know you can. That's true. I, I, know, never, I not, never thought of it that way. I'm not worried for you, but I'm just worried for the people you work with. All right, and with that, we're going to end episode 58 of Born in the 80s. You can check us out on Facebook or email us at bitecast at gmail dot com. Visit Born in the Eight. Or oh god, I almost said the wrong website. 80s podcast. Dot com. All right, that's time. You've been listening to Born in the 80s, part of the Little Podcast Network. Find more great podcasts at littlepodcast.com. All right, uh, all right, everyone talk a bunch. I just want to make sure levels are good. Um, so, yeah, we go over all those topics. Eric, and then going over all them talk- all right, topics. Good. Topics, boys. Toppings. Toppings. I love toppings. Just give me a bit of time to get uh, the intro. Oh, my God. Stop. Yeah. Uh, artists. I have us under Born in the 80s. Don't need you to go all Captain Falco on me, okay? <laughs> What's Captain Falco? It's when you, oh Tyler, it's when you become crazy <laughs> on the podcast. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He'll be on a lot more. I will. Because Adam and Lance are going to be gone, so I'll so need some. I listen. To I was <laughs> thinking about that, and I was thinking about maybe using my four track to create maybe a special segment for when I come on. Okay. So when I come on, it would be a special occasion. <laughs> okay. You would have all the stuff, the clips. From movies and stuff beforehand. Yeah. But I would take movie clips. Like, for instance, when we watched Any Given Sunday, we would have uh, the crazy Al Pacino lines. Yeah. And I would have like five of them. And we'd just play them and laugh at them. Sounds good. It's like, you're tearing this team apart. I still need to watch the Serpico. <laughs> or the part where uh, I was thinking about the top 10 Dirty Harry lines. Mm hmm. Because he's got some, just some ridiculous stuff in those movies. So. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Sounds good. I have to do it every time, but I thought yeah. it'd be fun a couple times. Yeah. All right. Well, let me hit start here, and we're gonna go. Not even like classic lines, just like I the s- weird fucking lines that they say in movies. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I still haven't seen the sequels. All right. <laughs>